and spinning and spinning. All right. Hello, hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. All right. There we go. All right. We are live. Hey, Chris. <laughs> What's going on, everyone? Back for another live letter. It's been a good while since we've been able to sit down and cover these, but uh, what do you think this one's about? So there's going to be a live letter. Uh, Yoshi P said um, about 15 minutes ago, this is all in Japanese so far, that there will be yeah. three uh, live letters between now and release. Okay. Uh, so they will have no battle stuff. They will keep that for after the media tour. So Makes that sense. one will most likely be in mid-May. Yeah. Uh, which puts the media tour in early May. Um, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... I assume the people that know they're going already know by now. Who knows? That would Who knows? be my guess. Yeah, when I talked to Kat, she was saying that they're still like they were still finalizing, but that was like a couple weeks ago. So yeah, and they're saying it's going to be in person this Tied year. Tied on timing. Tied on timing. Yeah. Well, and I think the in person thing also, just like last time, uh, last the last in person limits it more. They were able because of the remote access, I think, to get. Yeah, way more. I actually really liked that. I liked that it opened it up to so many more people mm -hmm. and it allowed them to take bigger, I guess, risks on the amount of exposure they get. Yeah. Um, and so you could afford to invite people from like the WoW community. I, I know there was there was some frustration from people who maybe their favorite Final Fantasy creator didn't get invited. It felt like, oh, that person got my, got their spot. But that's not really what right. happened. There was like a new round of spots that were opened up to people who who didn't really know what they were going through. And um, you ended up with some really neat coverage and you ended up with some yeah. questions that like longtime veterans know the answers to, but that doesn't mean that they're not good questions. We get a lot of fresh faces this time of year. So it's really <laughs> easy to take for granted this time of the season in a two year cycle. I don't know. I, I liked it. I liked that at the time I remember thinking some of the questions were like, oh, how do people know that's this? how to be fair though? Um, like that's how we feel a lot of the user generated questions are because it's like, there are so many, you know, things that we prioritize that doesn't necessarily translate to everybody. So whenever I hear a question that I'm like, I would definitely have never asked that question. Oh no. Or we've heard him answer this question before but and it's, it. and he'll take 30 minutes to answer the question. He'll go. Sometimes above his beyond. answer changes. Yeah, so sometimes true. his that's answer true. changes. Um, he did say today he's going to show off um, some of the graphics update. They're going to show a live in-game demo. Oh, nice. Uh, they're going to be pl playing uh, patch 6.58 yeah. um, content, showing it, I guess, with the updates. Um, and the, so the in-game in engine is the thing I've been waiting most to see because they've been showing us these slides where you can like outside of some skin tone, uh, like it's like I, wait did they did they change the image and we were laughing about that last time because they spent so much time focusing it on it and i go when they put this all in game when they show this all off in game in engine i think people it's going to come together i think quite nicely but in the images and of itself i was like all right man typically um a lot of the stuff from Fan Fest to the expansion has been live translated, but this time around, the gap, as you noted, from the final Fan Fest to launch is so much longer. Mm -hmm. um, that just the sheer amount of information coming out, maybe it doesn't make sense to live translate these. They do have this scheduled at only an hour and a half, which tells me it's not tri live translated, because I would think the live translated ones would be somewhere between two and three hours. Yeah, unless this thing's just going to be rapid fire. Um, so. That means that we'll be relying on the Final Fantasy XIV Reddit community, um, you know, and and you can always type exclamation point translate in any of our streams to get access to that Discord. Um, so we'll be we'll be pretty reliant on that. Oh yeah. Let me just make sure uh -huh. I have. So we'll see. I, I look forward to kind of seeing what it looks like. I, graphics are not the be all end all for me, but I'm not like glamour is not my end game. Right. G pose is not my end game. Um, even the story is not my end game. Like I'm, I'm glad it's there and I enjoy it. But like, had there never been this level of story in Final Fantasy, and had they pulled back from the amount that they've invested in the story over the years, mm -hmm. um, instead of doubling down, it would not have changed my relationship with the game. And so, like, I'm aware that like it's not necessarily for me. Um, so this level is not showing off the new job moves. No gamer. Uh, what's going to happen is. 
um, there will be a job action trailer that will come out um, and that'll be tied to the media tour. Yeah. And so that's kind of its own thing. Uh, and the way it worked at the last media tour for Endwalker is they actually, um, they didn't even want to go over all the tool tips. They trusted that would be disseminated by the community. So you would go to, uh, let's say Lama Todd gets invited and that's where you want to go for ninja guides and that Zeno gets invited and that's where you want to go for warrior and Paladin gets invited you know, and Ren gets invited and that's where you want to go mm -hmm. for Paladin and, and Mr. Happy for Monk. And, and in reality, like everybody kind of put out a little bit of everything. Um, but it, it, I think they thought like, instead of us trying to tell you about the job, let's just put the information out there, mm -hmm. you know, and, and let the community kind of make sense of it. Um, I echo inspired creativity saying, Good evening, everyone. I'm getting too old for these late night streams. When they announced the time, I was like, there's been a couple where I've like, I got to go make a snack or something because like I'm my body is physically saying it's time to sleep. What are you still doing? You're 40. <laughs> go to bed. <laughs> they will probably share one or two tool tips at some point, um, maybe even prior to all this. They'll, they may kind of like as like an, an a, a Hey, we've talked about this job's going to be getting some changes. Here's an example of the kind of changes we're thinking. Um, but throughout the media tour, the last several media tours, there's always been a leak, um, which would be a bummer. Yeah, and I'm I'm absolutely rooting against leaks. Like I don't want leaks. I it's, even if we don't, even if we don't get invited thing. to go, I don't want leaks. Because I think it's a part, like, I think the best thing we can give the developers is our excitement as they opposed to like, I've already overanalyzed it. Tour. Right. I've already overanalyzed all the, all the things. And I'm mad because I can't picture all of the other pieces that aren't contained in a screenshot of a skill. So I really like, I think, yeah, leaks are gu guaranteed, but please don't leak. <laughs> they don't charge people to go. All they ask in return is that you hold off long enough that all of the information can come out simultaneously. Um, and that means that the other people who go to the tour on a different day than you don't have an unfair advantage by going before you or after you. Um, and it gives everybody a chance to process it. So ideally, it's not whoever publishes first. Everybody has time to process it and really come to a conclusion before hitting publish. Yeah. Instead of seeing... You know, like Mr. Happy's a brilliant player and knows a lot about the game. Instead of seeing him try to crank out a monk video within two hours, he has like a week to really sit down and process that information. Um, and so there's a lot of advantages to the embargo and having an agreed upon we're all going to hit publish on this date. And the leak just gets out in front of all that. And and their whole idea is for the devs that it's a crazy week for them. They're giving all these interviews and things like that. And mm -hmm. then they get to take a breath and they get to watch all this coverage come out. They get to consume the community being excited and, and raging and whatever else. And they get to process <laughs> that after they've gone through this whole, instead of like yeah. trying to track down a leak and they're getting yelled at for something that wasn't even supposed to be public and it's being taken out of context. And like, it just, it just taints the entire situation. Mm -hmm. um so the leaks are a bummer um because it's such a small amount of time like they're asking you to keep your mouth shut for like 10 to 14 days and people can't do it uh it's hard man it's just yeah. mind-blowing like mind-blowing so uh, like we were talking about earlier, ETH, yeah, there's not going to be any job stuff in uh, in this one. Um, but he did say as a part of kind of the pre-show, there's going to be three live letters before the release of Dawn Trail. This being the first one, then one mid-May, which makes me think that, you know, like we we're talking about earlier, the immediate tour probably is going to be around the beginning of May. And then you have one prior to, you know, to launch, which would be roughly Summer Games Fest which I guess, you you know, in, at least in that same kind of vein where it takes place of where E3 used to be. Um, so. This is the community team. Do I think we'll get the benchmark? I think that's a logical prediction. They oh, haven't yeah. said anything about it yet. Um, Yoshi P was kind of they were kind of going over the schedule a little bit earlier and that was not stated, but they were just kind of going over it at a really broad level. Mm -hmm. 
um, they're in for a long day, right? I hope so. Yeah, so they're they've a got fourteen they, hours is, stream. Yeah, right. So from from their perspective, um, they've got uh, they've got ten hours of of their stuff, and then I think there's some community team stuff and and things like that. But they've got a long day ahead of them. Um, we will probably duck out after the live letter and, and yeah. kind of do a summary and all that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I got I got the boys' baseball game tomorrow morning, so it's like there's going to be a time when we do our summary, then it's going to be trite, you know, straight to bed, straight to jail, straight to jail. Um, I don't know if that bot works across everything, uh, but I know at least on the purple platform, um, we'll be getting all of our translations from Reddit. Uh. There we go. This is a Saturday for them as well. It is a Saturday for them. Saturday for us. Uh, I, I work on Saturdays, but. Yeah, it'll be Saturday here in an hour and a half. But thankfully, we know it's an hour and so hour and a half, right? They budgeted an hour and a half. And with no English translation, that means that it's it should be pretty pretty packed. There'll be a, a you know a kind of a break point halfway through, and then I, I just wonder how much time they're going to spend on QVC. So these guys are they playing the tabletop? Is that what's happening? I would assume so. I can turn up the volume. Wow. But it's in Japanese. Yeah. When the letters are in English, it takes like four hours. It does. It takes twice as long. So it'd be it'd be minimum two to three. So the fact that it's an hour and a half tells me. I assumed it would be translated because of its proximity to the expansion. It feels weird to translate the ones at FanFest and then going into the benchmark, going into restating questions on pre-orders and restating questions on you know mm. the new discounted versions like it just feels like you would want that in as many languages as you typically support it live letters going into this so like it feels yeah. weird to me that it's not translated um especially during a 14-hour broadcast where the goal is to kind of pad time like like you're trying to <laughs> you're trying to fill 14 hours if so you're like trying to fill from a programming standpoint it's to your advantage if one of the big marquee items on the list can take twice as long um yeah, this is the but, uh, table tabletop. You know, it seems like I, I would assume at least the one coming out of the media tour going over the job action trailer would be would be live translated. And then once we go into an expansion, they go back to not being tra translated at all. Um, and so I, I just don't remember how it worked last time. The gap between the Japanese fan fest and the expansion is so abnormally long that I think that's what's messing with me is that, yeah. that distance is just really big. Uh, right, because that we were like, as we were jumping in here, the first thing we were like, "What? What is this one going to be about?" Like, they've told us about the content and like showing off the in-game, you know, the engine and all the graphics update. I think that's good. They could show off the benchmark, even if they're not ready to release it out yet. You know, as, as an option, maybe we could, we'll see. Um, and but it's like the big piece in my mind that everybody's waiting for is what's changing with with the job it was like the job action trailer and and more is really kind of what drives a lot of really a big excitement and i feel like in a way that trailer kicks really kicks into high gear the hype for what is coming with the expansion um but i mean i guess we'll have to ultimately wait and see yeah because uh papa fuzz says yeah i'm just hoping that this kind of isn't a rehash the uh and i think that like with all live letters there will be a re there there's going to be a like we've already talked about a b c d and e you know and so that those are going to that that's going to exist naturally but it's still going to be something that first first half of the show is always a little bit of a restate in all the live letters um if you've been watching all of them because it's always a previously right. on right we're going to state these things that have been said over maybe 3 4 or 5 events in an interview um, for anybody that doesn't consume all Final Fantasy related news. Um, but I, I agree that I hope this isn't like entirely start to finish no news. 
Right. Um, it'd be rough to come out of an hour and a half and have gained nothing. It's happened before. There have been times where people were like, well, we're getting a dungeon next patch. And yeah, anybody who's here is like, yeah, of course. <laughs> like, I say that till what time we to find were, out we were getting a dungeon? <laughs> we've been here since we were getting, when we were getting three dungeons a patch. And um, now it's one. I think, is it one or is it like, kind of one and a half where it's like you get one and, and then the off you get two and then you get one or are they just straight it's, one across i don't know the board? it's now it's one across the board okay well it just makes the most sense now it's one across the board but it, it was a slow trickle from mm -hmm. three to the one um you get you get a big dump of them at the beginning uh so you get so we'll get one for 91 93 95 97 99 mm -hmm. and then we'll have two level 100 dungeons we'll have like the final dungeon and then like two bonus ones right is it three yeah a cap so we'll have three a cap and that's what gives you enough for like a capstone roulette i think they start two, with two, two and, and then, then they, add they start adding yeah and then they start basically where yeah because it used to there was a time where it was always two and then it's like it's just a 50 50 coin flip and and whatnot yeah, because you get the MSQ dungeon, they they factor in the MSQ dungeon along with the thank you, Heath, uh, with the the two level one hundred dungeons. It fills out really nicely into a clean little spreadsheet. You could pre fill the bracket and then have predictions on what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so they're doing the tabletop right now, is what is what I think they're talking about. Um, yeah, that's they're just talking about the tabletop Final Fantasy 14 RPG. Cool. I wonder if we'll ever get is, updates on the Netflix the, uh, series. I guess D and D just turned seven fifty, oh, and yeah? uh, they partnered with Lego, and they sold like a limited time Lego Dungeons and Dragons set. So you can build a dungeon and a dragon, a bunch of other stuff. And if you pre-ordered it like the first day, you got like a beholder chest mm -hmm. and all that, and. Uh, I had a friend buy it and it comes with like a little campaign if you don't want to homebrew it or, or use it or anything like that. So I haven't, we haven't gotten to play it yet. We're, we're getting together a night for it. Um, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Some Lego D and D. It doesn't look wildly different than D and D. If you've ever played D and D where somebody's had models. Yeah. I think Lego seems to, to be a natural sub in. I've done a lot more pen and paper than I have with models. The models is a really cool experience, but it just requires so much on the front end. Um, I've been more from an RPG, small RPG standpoint, I've found the terrain and stuff has been more justifiable in things like more time, mm -hmm. uh, which is more of a Baldur's Gate type experience where you have a small band of adventurers that you are going to carry through games instead of sessions. And then you have, each game is part of kind of like a tournament arc where you're, yeah, you, you get a chance to just like an RPG, you get a chance to like, you earn things through the way you're, you performed on the battlefield. And then you, you also take consequences based on the way you played on the battlefield. And then you, you kind of use the resources allocated to prepare for the next battle. Um, they say uh, for the uh, uh, tabletop RPG that it has story gameplay and cutscenes. Yes. Cutscenes. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's so that's interesting. So yeah, the uh, that means there'll be narration, and the game master will be narrating it. Now, uh, Etha, did you ever play uh, like you remember when they tried to relaunch Shadowrun on the like 360? I think that was kind of the time frame where it was. Uh, I remember Shadowrun back like on the I think it was Genesis or SNES or something like that from the video game perspective. But I think that would be something interesting especially with the like now successful you know cyberpunk 2077 see that kind of franchise come back i was gonna do this without caffeine i think that's a mistake mm -hmm. yeah i think that is a mistake i've got uh coffee i've got a water and i've got tea downstairs ready to rock and roll Bida says i'd be interested in a lego movie universe D, &D game that would just be wild so, like the Lego movies, but in them they're playing D and D. That'd be really cool. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I was talking about. 
I know uh, Nax, uh, the live letter officially kicks off here in about 15 minutes. Uh, they're right now talking about the Final Fantasy XIV tabletop RPG. And so we're just kind of detailing out the little bits of information that's trickling out. Oh, here we are. It's going to be a late night. Uh, and then here's the schedule. Uh, the big the big thing that we're going to be covering, this is a, they're going for 14 hours. We are not going for 14 hours. But the big thing that they've got going is uh, is the live letter. That's what we're going to be hanging out for. Probably going to summarize it after the fact. We'll see. I've got uh, I've got the boys baseball game tomorrow and and what have you. So I'm going to have to make sure that I I get enough sleep. <laughs> Adulting. With all the crap that Hasbro and Wizards is doing, I'm not really keen on playing anything actual D and D. I haven't what like, I don't know what they're doing, Nevi. But if you feel like enlightening me, I'm, I'd be very interested to hear about it. I'm not, I'm not in tune with the D and D universe of <laughs> of Wizards of the Coast and all that. Playing as a master builder in a Lego universe, that'd be cool. Yeah. Uh, Evilish Shadow Zilla says, "Do we think we're going to see the job action trailer soon? Mid May? Uh, yeah, we're going to see that. May. may, 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 may. It, like if I was, let me just pull up a so Define soon. I mean, yeah, soon, sooner than December. Not in the next few hours, <laughs> but in a matter of weeks. Yes. All right, so we're at kind of mid April." So roughly speaking, yeah, I think I think we'll we see. We could next. be. Do you think they would also do it on? Do you think they do that on a Friday? I don't know. Um, that's logical because I think there'll be a live letter tied to it. But the yeah. the other thing to factor is it could also be tied to an embargo date, and so the embargo date will be there. May be a marketing. Yeah, they don't want to tied to it. Yeah, and they don't want to do that on a Friday. You usually release, you know, your big marketing push. Right, probably on a Tuesday. So most likely, then we'd be looking at so uh, like whatever May fourteenth. May fourteenth falls smack dab in the middle of so, May, not around any like. I mean, maybe there's a holiday. Does if anybody knows when's, when's Japan's Golden Week? Because they J- Japan has a, basically this like you know obviously that we call it Golden Week, which means like yeah i think they would end up avoiding so it the time frames are not consistent expansion to expansion uh shadowzilla this this expansion has set the record across all expansions for the longest time between the 0.55 and the release of the next expansion um with the exception of 1.0 to 2.0 like this is this is this is long um so it's not it's not typical um even among the other ones where you look for a pattern this one has run long um historically the predictable thing is that the live the media tour is historically one month prior to the expansion launching so the expansion launching on june 29th means that you would expect the media tour to take place in mid to late may Mm -hmm. um and the way the media tour will work is one of two ways it sounds like it's in person this time but let me just explain both um because we've seen both over the years one is in person where they basically take a global tour like a band and they visit the different regions each on different weeks um, and they have like two days one or two days in each location and they do those rapid fire and then everybody's under an embargo date that releases globally on the same date so one part of the world gets the most time mm-hmm. um i think the last in-person one it was japan europe then na um and then it released and then or there's digital and digital was where they basically just had a string of days and there were days that were more dedicated to traditional press versus YouTubers and things like that. Um, but it was much more rapid fire. Uh, the digital one allowed a much broader set of people to be allowed to go um, because seats were less limited. Mm-hmm. Um, it's how many they can basically police because what they do is they put you in like light parties and then they have on staff tech to make sure that you're having a good experience and you log into a remote server, you get to play the game and then that's it. Um, as opposed to the in-person ones, it's a physical location where they have computers set up and things like that. Gives okay. them a much yeah. greater level of control over the experience. They're able to give those people 
when Brian and I were invited to one uh, for Shadowbringers, we got to go into a room that was decorated for Shadowbringers. I mean, it was yeah. purple lights and Very it was dark gothic. and it was like the whole experience was amazing. Um, the small ones, everybody got an interview. Uh, ours was shared with the Reddit community. So Brian and I got to sit next to a member of the Reddit community and ask Yoshi P corrections, uh, questions direct, uh, couch to couch. Um, and the total number of interviews I think was somewhere around 30 or 40. Uh, the digital one, the following time for Endwalker, Brian and I were invited again, but it was much, much larger. Uh, and not everybody got an interview because of the sheer number. So he actually ended up giving closer to 60 interview, uh, interviews. Um, but like Brian and I did right. not get an interview. So <laughs> like, because the sheer number of people was just that much bigger. Um, obviously like your Mr. Happy's always get an interview. Uh, and the people that are invited and not invited varies. Like just because we've been invited in the past doesn't mean we'll be invited in the future. Uh, just because people haven't been invited in the past doesn't mean they will be in the future. Like it's, um, it's a question of like, what gets them the most exposure? So like, they might say, Hey, we want somebody from the rating community. So they might pick one or two people from the rating community. They won't pick all the raiders. We want somebody from the lore community. So they pick, right. Um, and, and, and they'll say things like, Hey, here's an Xbox RPG player who just plays ESO and has been in doing the free trial. Let's invite them. Um, because from a marketing standpoint, that makes sense. And there will be people that will go, well, why does that guy get to play Dawn Trail before us? Um, like that will be a natural thing. But the answer is because that guy is going to go back to a bunch of Xbox ESO players and say, guys, hey, this game looks awesome. You got to come, you got to come play some Final Fantasy. Wouldn't you? Have you heard about the incredible free trial all the way? Mm, right. <laughs> yeah, and the uh, uh, coder nerd says is the live letter in English. And this one will not be, Doesn't it will be like fan it. translated uh, via Reddit. And if you check, I think the top link in the description, it should be, or there should be that link in the description. But if not, we'll make sure we get that added afterwards. Otherwise, Use the pound, the command, uh, the exclamation mark translate, and that will also then provide you the link uh, to the Reddit translation if you want to have that too. I know it does at least on Twitch. It is not flawed. It should also, yeah, there it is. Yeah. Um, the Final Fantasy 14 Reddit community is the largest single third party community for Final Fantasy 14 in the world. Um, and a handful of members in there on the Discord provide live translations, which is absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, absolutely incredible. Very kind gift. I don't believe they're compensated in any way. Maybe <laughs> there's money that flows into the Reddit community and that is distributed amongst them, but it's not it's not worth what they do. I'll tell you that. <laughs> so that is so um, true. It's like you put how many hours into this? And it's like, and you, you got what? It's like I got a free controller at one point. A, yeah, it's just a kindness. Um but yeah, the media tour is usually where they they give people a chance to do the more granular things, um, experience the jobs, uh experience the tool tips, which will have potencies that do still need it. Now they won't be able, they'll be able to take them in probably want, whatever dungeon is considered the least spoilery. Mm -hmm. uh, so in Endwalker, that was um, Tower of Babel? Tower, no, no, Tower, what's the first tower in, uh, what was, which which one was it in Endwalker? The ones with the sisters. I know what you're talking about. The elephant um... sisters. Um, Tower of Zod, Zot, 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 Tower of Zot, uh, was, was the one we got to do in, uh, Shadowbringers. It was some, the, the frog people out mm -hmm. in fairyland there. Yeah, that was cool. Whatever that is. Um, that's the second one, I think. Yeah. And, and it's, it's just based on like, what is going to give you the least, um, right. Mm -hmm. Like what is gonna what is gonna reveal the least lore? Yeah, uh, and then they'll give them access to a couple of zones, but the zones will have been stripped of NPCs uh, and things like that, and then and quest givers, and then they'll be allowed to fly around on basically probably like a chocobo or the collector's edition mount. Uh, that way, all the footage coming out of it is showing off the new collector's edition mount, and they'll all be wearing you know, class gear that's provided uh, on max level characters. So there will be yeah. no experience gain or anything like that. Um, so it is, 
it's a limited access. They'll have access to, you know, a city in two zones or something like that. But it'll give us a chance to start. We'll start hearing the, the music. We'll start seeing the zones. Um, and honestly, at this point, I think one of the important things coming out of it will be all the footage with the graphics update because they'll all be playing on the graphics update. And if it's all on physical hardware, if it is an in-person one, um, mm -hmm. you'll be playing on optimal hardware with the graphics update. So the footage coming out of it should be pretty fantastic, um, which would be very cool. I was cleaning my office. Um, I'm trying to get my office clean before the expansion. And I found my old Chocobo sound uh, alarm clock for yeah. one of them <laughs> Yeah, on my Endwalker flash drives. Um, so it's cool stuff. Um, but tonight's show should begin in about five minutes. Five minutes. And roughly they budgeted an hour and a half. And then, so assuming that they stick with that, you know, kind of tight time frame, they might go over a little bit longer. That's, yeah, it's something natural. So, yeah, mentally, I'm I'm budgeting energy enough to do two hours and hopefully a summary after the fact. But uh, we'll have to we'll have to see. I've got some tea downstairs if I need it. I'm finishing a cup of coffee right now. Um, what's and I got some pistachios to help. What's up? I think I can run three minutes of ads before this starts. So I'm going to go slam Twitch people through like a billion ads. <laughs> uh, if you guys want to get up and get a drink, that way hopefully you're not interrupted during the show. There we go. All right. Goodbye, Twitch people. I don't know that I have that power on YouTube. YouTube doesn't give you that power, but we could we could disable mid-rolls on YouTube. Let's see. If... Whatever the platforms want to do. Let's go... I actually, for a while, when we were streaming on Twitch, like, and they were pushing that whole, like, you know, do it at these increments or whatever, and we'll pay you to try out yeah. ads. I actually was, I found it made my streams a lot more energetic and a lot more, because what I was doing is I was, yeah. I was building a break. Yeah. And I was building in breaks. So I was like, I'm going to get up and I'm going to go get a drink and these ads are going to run. Yeah. Um, and I really enjoyed it. And had it continued, had that continued, my plan was to start building like three minute videos um little shorts and then just kind of playing those that way the people who don't you know support with things like like premium or subs or anything like that they they get something they're not just staring at a chair um you know that way there was something there but that program ended up ending before i ever got something like that built i built like two or three of them and then that was it program was over mm-hmm a neat little run yeah i've seen interesting people try to kind of tackle that that challenge like in in creative ways which is you know all right i mean it's what radio djs do that's where i got the yeah. idea is i was listening to some radio djs on like there was a podcast and it had they had radio djs talking about like radio dj problems right like how do you um i think my caffeine's here uh, they have radio radio DJs talking about things like throat launches, lozenges, and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, code. What they're doing right now is they're playing the Final Fantasy fourteen tabletop RPG, and so they've been kind of breaking down what's all kind of included. Uh, they got a narrator, you know, obviously uh, story, gameplay, and cutscenes is what they described it as, but. Yes, they are playing uh, basically Final Fantasy XIV D and D, which they've they announced a while back. I don't remember the date. I'm really excited about this. I don't really drink refined sugar anymore. So I'm trying to lose weight, but we ran out of espresso, and it's mm -hmm. too late at night to go get espresso. So all that's open is gas stations. Ah. Uh. So I'm about to have some refined sugar. And I'm kind of stoked on it. <laughs> Let's see how it <laughs> how you react to it. All of a sudden, it's like you start bouncing off the walls. So, so. Oh, ASMR there somewhere. <laughs> for, every, for everybody who's also and uh, having a late night with us tonight. <laughs> This is the Final Fantasy XIV uh, tabletop game. Um, 
It is indeed. Oh gosh, that's gonna spill if I don't. <laughs> How is this refined sugar? Oh, it's so sweet. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> Like I can feel the sweetness, like on the back of my eyeballs. I had a uh, when I was when I was sick with bronchitis, I was like I had a sore throat and coughing, and so it's I had a uh, good a cough drop, and it was so good. Oh, oh. let's turn up the music. All right, let's do it. This looks like it's in game. This is. This is, is the this benchmark. Our graphics update. This is the benchmark right here, guys. Official benchmark. God, that grass looks good. I don't know if yours is choppy at all, but I've got it pulled. No, up. it looks it looks great. I can't believe the sheer amount of foliage. Yeah, that's the thing that is the first immediately noticeable, and that in leather, just sheer quantity. Oh, the Le leather's been the winner every the time. The leather shown has won time. every graphics update showcase they've shown. The sheer quantity of stuff is the biggest change. I have trouble seeing it as better, like, fidelity. It's yeah. probably there, but I have trouble seeing that. So you can start to see some skills by the classes. Oh, look at that. He's Viper. All right. Some new skills there for Samurai. It'll be really nice to do gathering with more particle effects and more grass and stuff around. Yeah. That's such a little thing, but... It adds so much, though. Oh, you think Brian's broadcasting in less FPS? Okay. Mm. Yeah, right now, like, I'm... It looks lawless on, on my end, but... Okay. The cloth textures and the ground textures, I think, are the big wins. Yeah, that ground texture looks so much better. Yeah, I see some frames dropping on your end. Okay. We always have that with trailers. Yes, yeah.
Astro looks way more time magey. <laughs> that didn't look boom, like boom. a benchmark because it didn't have enough I guess we would be swapped out for them I'm going to lower the volume on them all right, we're gonna turn the volume down on them because they're just gonna be speaking Japanese. Japanese, yeah. Obviously, even if you understand Japanese, go watch them. <laughs> Enjoy the show. Um, we will have once again, just for clarity, we are getting all of our translations from the Final Fantasy XIV Reddit community, um, and we'll be and then we'll be adding in our own commentary. Having been to uh, a lot of, we've covered a lot of these events. When did we start yep. first start covering live letters? Late. Publicly, late Heavensward. Maybe Stormblood. Stormblood. Yeah, long time. So, yeah, a long, long time. time. And between yeah, us, I think we've covered every single one. Going maybe going into into Stormblood. So you're probably right, late Heavensward, because it was you know, hey, here's Stormblood. We went saw it announced. Yeah, etc. Uh, long time. Uh, live letters can be a variety of things going into the expansion. I never really expect a whole lot, I think, because mm -hmm. those of us that have been around multiple expansions uh, know that, A, they're not going to spoil story, so they're not going to tell us any of the juicy stuff, which we don't, I mean, you kind of well, want them to, but you don't really want them to. Right. Uh, and B, everything else is so per the formula. Like, you're always getting the same stuff, like, as a core ingredient. Like, Every expansion tastes different, but it's always made of the same raw ingredients. This many dungeons, this many trials, this many, like, there's, the, and, and the changes to those ratios have been slow and steady. Like, we used to have more dungeons. Now we have other things in the place of those. Um, All right, Sunday. So there, you can download the benchmark Sunday, April 14th. Okay. There we go. So I guess for us, uh, PT, I guess. Okay. I was like, great. You know, the 15th at two in the morning. Great. There it is. That has felt like a logical thing to drop into one of these shows when they don't have something else to give us. But the biggest thing slowing it down has been like, are they ready to reveal the graphics update? Otherwise, like, I think you could have done this back when they first announced pre-order date. Mm -hmm. um, well, they, they did have that. They did do that presentation and they focused that on the collector's edition. So, like, in terms of you know, having something for this one. <laughs> I was, Fido's done the math and says, for people that are time zone challenged like myself, that that is 27 hours from now. Um, so, so if you're I, watching this in 27 hours, you can go download the benchmark right now. And uh, if you're the rest yes. of us who are live, wait. Get some sleep between now and then yeah. <laughs> would be my recommendation. Um, but yes, this should this should show the new graphics because the advantage is like it doesn't have to be the client, right? It's a it's a right. video. So ideally this will be testing the new graphics updates and um telling you what level your PC is gonna be able to handle for the game. And obviously that gives you until June to pull all of your paychecks, stop paying all of your rent, get evicted, mm -hmm. but have the right PC for the expansion. Yeah. Financial advice brought to you by work to game. Uh, <laughs> Make sure you're saving for retirement, guys. <laughs> but yeah, it should be good. I'm excited. I, I've been getting more and more excited for the expansion just a little bit at a time. I actually spent most of today watching Final Fantasy lore videos. I watched some Ethis Asser videos. I watched some Eorzean archives. Um, I watched... I watched a video from some just random creator had like a bajillion views and it was like ARR. It was 1.0 to ARR. I think I don't remember if I included 1.0 because I haven't watched 1.0 today. Um, and it was all in like three hours and I watched the whole thing 
which is three hours of my life. Um, and I was like, this video is awesome. And I looked in the comments and it's like, this video is awesome. And everybody was like so supportive. And then there was responses from the creator, like, thank you so much. Like, I really appreciate the feedback. And like, here's the things I'm going to be taking in my future videos. And then I like clicked on the person's channel and it was the only video they ever published. Like just one and done. Just one video had like a hundred thousand views, which in the final fantasy directory is that's like massive. Yeah. Triple platinum God mode. And, and then that's it. And then they just were like, and I'm, well, I've achieved all that I set out to achieve with one video. Uh, uh, lifetime views of a hundred thousand, and I'd be done. Batting uh, a hundred thousand. Late to the game says, "Will the graphics update hit the console version?" And yes, the answer is uh, yes. It will be applying to the consoles as well. That's one of the things why we feel that uh, the original Xbox One will is not supported why the Xbox Series X and S is because from just a platform delivery perspective, uh, we, we could probably uh, start to assume some consoles like the PS4 might not make it to a, you know, it might not be supported in 8.0, but we have no confirmation on that yet. As a disclaimer that was given out when they first announced the graphics update for anybody that doesn't remember that far back or was not watching those shows, there will be um, some elements of the graphics updates that will not all be ready for day and date of Dawn Trail, uh, specifically as they go back and update certain pieces of gear and certain um, like faces and things like that. So they did warn you for people that are going back to play through the game or for new players that there may be times where you are in a scene and there is an NPC wearing let's say upgraded gear with an upgraded face talking to an unupgraded face face with unupgraded gear um and then they just said just please bear with us like that's just going to be yeah. a process um they so will also for that wants to yeah. like oh my gosh i'm gonna go back and replay arr as soon as i get through the dawn trail story i'm gonna replay the whole thing straight through like that's gonna have some weirdness to it um until they're fully done the, uh, it's also important to note that they will be providing a Fantasia to everybody in case for some reason you don't like how the graphics update has made your character look. And if you want to change it, then you'll be able to Fantasia and make that change. Uh, Carrie says, are we hyped for Dawn Trail? What do you think, Chris? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, like when... So I've only ever missed when I at a time that I was subscribed to WoW, I've only ever missed one expansion launch. Um, and it was because I already had plans and they delayed the expansion. Uh, this one, I predicted a bunch of dates and then it fell exactly on the one week I already had planned. So I'm going to miss early access and I will be able to play on official launch day. So I'm going to miss that weekend. Um, I just already have plans. They're going to keep me away from my computer. Um, but other than that, I'm super, I'm super, super excited. Uh, for, for me, I'm racing against the clock, trying to lose three pounds a week, uh, because while I'll step in and play the new class, I can't advance the story of Final Fantasy 14 until I'm below 210 pounds. And the last I was I weighed in it is 248. Uh, the good news is, is like I, I recently weighed in and didn't lose any weight, which is a bummer. But I am now no longer pre-diabetic, which is a big win. So uh, another health milestone uh, for me. So. This has been, uh, I think, a really good, uh, a really good experience for me, and I'm looking forward to kind of continuing the story. But I've got a little bit of work on myself to do before I allow myself to move forward. I hope that I'll make it. That's the goal, because I'd love to be able to react to Chris playing through the story like he did for me on Endwalker. Um, but uh, like, I am, I am pretty hard, hard set that I, you know, I got to step on that scale, and if it says you know, 210 or below, then it's like, all right, let's go. Yeah, for Endwalker, Brian had plans for early access, and so he was not able to play. And uh, and so I finished the story before he got to first log in to MSQ. So then I live streamed, and we had two live streams up, one that was no spoilers and one that was full spoilers. It was me watching him, which was awesome. Um, thank you, Dark Wolf. Thanks, Dark Wolf. Um, but yes, remember when the benchmark launches, you will be able to save those characters if you want to be able to switch to your, especially for female lion, right? Because that's yeah. that's the one that you can't just immediately replicate. Um, so you'll be able to to instantly import that. Um, 
and, and I didn't get to say it, but I miss Ethis as well. Oh, as dude, soon as his voice I came Ethis on, this so much. So I hope he's doing well. I hope in, he's doing in well. his endeavors. Um, so catch up a little bit on the show. Uh, they've been just kind of chatting here about collector's edition and stuff like that. There was a question of, are they going to show us some 7.0 stuff? Um, and they said in the first half, we're going to be going over a lot of in-game footage with technical terms about the graphics update. They will try to explain it as best as they can with side-by-side -side comparisons of 6.58 and how it will look in 7.0. So right now they're prepping everything. Um, he usually makes some level of joke that he's going to reveal something the devs uh, are now going to don't have want to him. <laughs> don't want him to. Um, yeah. Always making their job harder. Uh, so usually there's some joke in there. But you opted to miss early access so that you can take a uh, four-day weekend to play. That's Great. smart. Great. That's smart. Yeah. Um, for anybody that does rating and stuff, there is a delay before we get into Savage. It's two weeks at expansions. It used to not be delayed at all for the point two and point four, And mm -hmm. as of Endwalker, is now delayed by one week for point two and point four. Um, so take the patch at your pace. There isn't a reason to, to slam it any longer. Um, which is great. So Yoshi P is executing a macro uh, that will change the weather. And so that's what he's working on right now. That's a neat macro to have. I believe <laughs> there are third-party tools that can mimic that. And uh, unfortunately, none of us would ever be able to use those or figure them out. Because uh, that would be against the rules. So is the physical goodies expected to be delivered pre-launch week or after the official launch day? Uh, traditionally it has been after the launch day, you get a code for early access. Uh, you know, if you think about the download, etc., it's not like even the full game. So you'll have like, uh, a couple a week or something like that after the game releases before you have to put in your actual code. I know if you order from the Square Enix store, things get tricky. We, uh, we have, we have seen the Square Enix store orders, you know, can, can, can kind of struggle. So just be aware of that but physically the game is officially out on the second and what they're doing is just that early access bonus uh which carries you into this uh, into the official release hopefully that helps alex um late to the game might finally jump back in never got past the pre-dlc main game uh, speedrunners, uh, I watched a speedrunning video today. I watched a lot of 14 cons today. I was just being lazy and kind of semi-napping. Um, yeah. speedrunners can clear ARR in, you know, somewhere in that kind of 12 to 24 hour range. Um, they've done the game before and they're, they're blasting through it. So yeah. it is a very long game to get through that. It can easily be 200, 400 hours. Um, and it's a lot, it's a huge buy-in. Uh, there are a lot of things that if you don't pay attention there are a lot of callbacks. Look at how much better that grass looks. So definitely, like, you're benefited for taking it seriously. Um, I will tell you, I skipped it and came back for it. Uh, and, and that was fine. There were things, obviously, I missed that ended up kind of making sense in retrospect. Um, but just play however is fun for you. Uh, there will be people in the community that tell you there is a correct way. The correct way is actually the fun way. And those people can screw off if that doesn't align with yours. Uh, I, so I'm I just, assuming. Go ahead, Chris. Sorry. So I pushed the escape key and played it because I like playing MMOs. I just didn't like all the reading. Um, there are story skips actually physically sold in the shop if you want to spend money and literally skip it. I didn't want to do that. Um, I just literally pushed the escape key and blasted through it um, because story was not my end game. Story is a, a driving force of a lot of people in the community. So like saying that is kind of a little bit taboo, um, but whatever's fine. Man, that grass just looks incredible. Looks incredible. Uh, so this is Elpis, and it's it's an area that they you know they know that they put a lot of effort into, um, and I think it makes a big difference. I think it looks awesome. The thing about ARR pacing is uh, a Realm Reborn, base a Realm Reborn, uh, just the 2.0 stuff, not the 2.1 through um, the end, was built in like 11 months. Um, so it was built really, really rapidly. 
while continuing to service 1.0 um, as they saw them out. Mm -hmm. So it, it was really fast. Uh, and so in order to not spend a lot of time thinking about compli complicated things, they would make a decision once and then that would just ripple over the entire choice. Like we would just make a choice in one meeting and then we're not going to come back and revisit this. So one of the things that they did is they said there should be a ratio. You see that the grass is actually moving as they walk through it versus. Yeah, check that out. Like the grass is reacting no. in the 7.0. Yeah. No. It's an interesting effect that they did, I guess, to try to make these things look more populated, like with the grass, but like. Get on a mount. Oh, and it bounces after. Yeah. Oh, get on a mount. Get on a mount. Get on a fat cat. I want to watch yeah, a fat cat. The underbrush does look much better. Um, but in 2.0, there was this idea that there is an optimal ratio, like a golden ratio of gameplay to uh, like story, storytelling. So like cutscenes and, and mm -hmm. text. And so that means there are parts of ARR where they were expounding on story, not because the writing was good, but because they were trying to fill a writing segment and yeah. there were times where they were plugging gameplay in where you're like running back and forth between the same place over and over um not because they thought that was invigorating gameplay but because they're like well we have more story to tell and we're not allowed to tell it until we give you this much gameplay um so you know like that's that's an oversimplification of it but just like recognize like it wasn't their best work mm -hmm. it doesn't mean it's not good it doesn't mean you can't enjoy it but like it definitely got better um as it went but unfortunately like they don't do it previously on so if you do skip it recognize that there will be people that will walk on scene and it's supposed to be like a big reveal moment and the music will pan up and they'll go and look who it is and if you skip arr you're gonna go okay like do, do we do we know each other um because i don't know you um so you're allowed to enjoy a realm reborn i think there's a lot of really great story and world building in there it was just built really really rapidly um and it was built a long time ago so like games were different and it wasn't you're given right. the amount of resources that things are now check this out fido's calling it out the mountain's actually leaning in on the turns in 7.0 where no. right now yeah check it out like it has that little that pitch to it on both you know left and right that's wonderful Have you seen that YouTube short of Preach comparing WoW mounts to Guild Wars 2 mounts? Mm -mm. And he's like trying to slide on that like little shark suit. And he's like struggling. And then he's on like the big like shark, like smirking and like having a blast. <laughs> like that's, yeah. what this, that's what this looks like. <laughs> like. Like one of them's like on a carousel on the left. You guys mm -hmm. have been riding a carousel on the right. You'll be riding a bird. <laughs> uh. <laughs> that'd be wild if they made one of the actual raid series required i think it's it's an interesting discussion topic because i definitely fall in the pro category especially because they have the the you know the normal version in and of itself that you know but having it segmented off and not be a part of the main story it in my mind it does feel that the big bad of the story could be serviced better if it was like oh and now you know we we've beaten them one version of them but their ultimate version is waiting for us in the raid i don't know it's it's a hit or miss question for me final fantasy already has such a huge buy-in that only gets bigger every two years for new players that i immediately want to tell people no whenever they want to make anything else required mm -hmm. just to protect new players um but I do agree that there are some stories that are told that without them, um, you miss a lot. You know, like if you were going to go back, like if you if you bought the ARR skip, like if you bought and you picked up in Heaven's Word, mm -hmm. and you just charged on it, you're like, should I go back and do ARR? Maybe. You could probably watch a couple videos, get the general gist of it. You'd miss a couple things because you'd be taking 40 to 
200 hours of content and mm -hmm. slamming it into one to three hours or whatever video you watched. So like you inherently have to cut something, but I would rather you go back and do the raid series from ARR unsynced. Like, I think that would be a more profound growth. And like I do, so I think there are raid series that grow a lot for the game. I wonder which raid series would be voted as the most important. I think it's ARRs. I think ARR's raid series is the most influential on the story as a whole. Um, it's the one that I would make mandatory. Yeah. Check out the uh, the, the stones between these two. Like The, the ground effects in the leather is going to be the winner. Yeah. I like this. I like this comparison a lot. I've been filming footage for a project and this makes me want to stop. <laughs> well, not everything's going to have that. But the ground that will. detail all throughout the every zone in the game. I bet so. Okay. I bet it's across the board. I bet I bet it's base textures. So I, I think I think I think everybody that spends time on the floor, mm -hmm. um, you know, G posers, fishers, dragoons, they're all going to have just a much better gameplay experience. If you're worried about the PS4 being okay, Yoshi P says, yes, it will be fine on PS4. Your PS4 will survive. Now, I've heard Dragon's Dogma 2 is, is breaking some PS5s out there. <laughs> Wow. They did say that not all the mounts will tilt because some mounts look weird when they tilt. Yeah, that would make sense. So makes sense with wings. You know? Which I think that'll help to not have all the mounts be identical animations. That'll make them feel more distinct. Yeah. Um, because sometimes in the game, like it feels like things are just copy pasted. Uh you think they're gonna show off the grapes? Final Fantasy stream asking for grapes. I have my grapes on my nerd wall now, guys. Um, this is all blurred behind me. My nerd wall is coming back up. But um, I have my grapes. I've been excited. Oh, yeah. They was gave those fun? out. That was FanFest, right? Yep. FanFest this year? Mm hmm Gave us grapes. We got him back, boys. We got him back. Redownloading on the PS5 and PC. Yeah, outside of the uh, outside of the Xbox uh, chat filter snafu. Nice. Uh, outside of the Xbox chat filter snafu, like I think it seems to be going very smoothly over there on that platform. No, 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 no. 30 minute food buff. That was such a clever thing for them to give out. Yeah. Squishy little grapes. You wish they would sell the physical stuff from FanFest on a store uh, like for BlizzCon. The cool thing about BlizzCon is like um, when Brian and I went, Brian got the Alliance uh, Grunt and it's over there. And then my, I got the Orc. Um, right. And so like he, he got the, uh, the footman and I got the grunt and, um, they gave you the chance to complete your set. Like, we neither of us did, but for 25 or $35 or whatever, you could buy the missing one. Now this um, is the statue that I'm most excited about. If we and the Phoenix battling it out for final fantasy 16, hopefully this will be coming to PC very soon guys. <laughs> All right, so now they're going to show water. They, the, the metals didn't really impress me as far as, like, it doesn't look that much better. Um, I mean, graphics on, like, racing games came were so far ahead of everybody else because metal was just so much easier to do. Um, I don't know why, but metal metals just metals looked good in games for a long time. Uh, so I got good news, King. Uh, they have uh, revealed the benchmark trailer. So if anybody is just joining us now, uh, they showed off the benchmark trailer with the new graphics update and announced that you can download it here. And we did the math. Uh, thank you, Fido. I think uh, in 27 hours and chances are that's 26 hours and 30 minutes. 
from what all that was revealed. I think it should be everywhere. I mean, it doesn't mean it will go back and look identically good on all things, but I bet the whole game looks better starting yeah. June 29th. Like immediately. Um, I bet the whole game looks better. So, I don't know. I may halt grabbing footage and start finishing up my third party assets, maps, and stuff. There you go. So, I can still be productive. Yeah, so if, uh, for C Mustard saying, I forgot all about this live letter. Uh, what uh, here in mid May is roughly when the next live letter after this will be. And that's where we're going to get the, the job action trailer and and more details about uh, the changes to the different jobs themselves. So I think that's going to be a very, very exciting time. So they just literally have two versions of the game running right now. Like yeah. instead of doing side by side footage, it's just two clients. Makes sense. <laughs> Interesting. This feels like the perfect case for multi-boxing. <laughs> right? Because then every time he took a step, it would take a step in both games. Yeah. You know, I mean, somebody would report him for breaking terms, but most likely nothing would happen. Immediately to GM jail. Mm -hmm. Straight to jail. Straight to jail. <laughs> but then we would see the jail in both regular def and high def. Carrie, thank you so much. Wow, thank you, Carrie. That is so nice, so generous of you joining as a member. Let me push up my member goal. I've been giving out five for every 25. Let me get to the source and see where I'm at. 19 of 25. That puts us at 20 and 25. Oh. Thank you, Carrie. So they said they're going to show water next. Yeah, it's supposed go to be. Go show the dock. Like go, it's go, right in front of them. Go jump the in the water. Is, Let's the water go. Is right in front of them. <laughs> they're standing on the coast, teasing yeah. us. Ridiculous. I do think it will affect ARR. That's my guess. I think it will have to. Oh, affect. yeah? I, I just can't imagine you roll this out on zone specific because I think the same textures are getting parsed out over the whole game. I think you're you're seeing the same texture maps and all that. Oh, you're saying that they're already wet in this case, Fido? Saying characters are showing the is wet effect? The character is wet? To highlight the shininess is what Fido was saying. Smooth and shiny skin. Makes the characters look more lively. Okay, but they said the next is water. Like the exact word used was water. Not like moisture. <laughs> All right. Brits. Well, 7.0 guys. Moist Lollafels. You're welcome. There you go. <laughs> we did it. We did it, guys. Uh, all right. They've got a long show. They've got 14 hours. They could do this all night. Okay. Fantastic. There we go. There, okay. There's some water. Wow. What a difference. It makes the one on the right look like when it first started raining and the one on the left look like it's already been raining. Yeah. That's incredible. That's so cool. Mm-hmm. I hope I have the graphics to run this thing at max. I don't usually run games at max, but it'd be nice to have the option. Mm -hmm. 
Um, you have a 3080, so you should be completely fine. It doesn't mean I'll stream with it at max, just because I prefer frame rate over that. But mm -hmm. it would be yeah. really nice to have the option. It looks like ah. the back, the in the background, you see the how the tree is moving and the bells are moving, and then on the left hand side, I, it's so much more subtle. So the animations are on the right hand side are way more lively, I guess, for lack of a better word. Is the spider web moving too? Yeah, down at the bottom, bottom right. Barely. Right, yeah. So subtly. I was like, I, I'm i noticing the bell, kind of the little bells back and forth. That's great. Wow. I'm impressed. Yeah. This is so much better than the Lollafell chin for an hour. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> it just started here. <laughs> and yeah, it's so it's funny. Quiet. Some people were Imagine so if this was the focusing first on that. Time we'd seen anything about the graphics update. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Shadow. No images, no progress. I mean, I guess some of those they got feedback, but I have to imagine a lot of that feedback was not helpful. You've been playing Starfield at 144. Like, fantastic. Wow. Is there a noise that happened? Yeah, that was just somebody subscribed. I have a uh, oh. the thing up so, <laughs> so I can like, see if anything maybe, happens like, over on Twitch me. or wherever. Okay. Uh, that's that that one. That one was uh, that. That was a uh, refined sugar will do that to you, kids. Uh, <laughs> Chris is tripping balls noises. right now. We haven't we, we haven't let him have sugar in in uh, a year, and and tonight's the night. I haven't had sugar in a long time either, so I'm. I, mean, no. I have little bits and stuff, but nothing. Like I don't this. like I, I. This is when they said that I was I was pre diabetic and all I that, and I started four grams. I just had like probably three or four, yeah. maybe even five days worth in yeah twenty minutes. When when they when they told me I was pre diabetic and then I you know quit Final Fantasy fourteen, <laughs> it's like all right, we're off of, we're off of any anything that tastes good. I sip. I'll, I'll order an unsweet tea, and I'll and every they'll bring me the tea, and I am always like. Just to, like I just let it touch my lips to make sure that it doesn't taste good <laughs> before I continue drinking it. I tried the intermittent fasting. It was not a good fit for me. I think that has a lot to do with your digestive system, but I have friends that swear by it. See, I, I really um, enjoy intermittent fasting. I do better with the micro meals. Like the, yeah, some people definitely micro meal much better. Um, I see, I just, yeah. My gut biome does not like the gaps. Um, but, but I eat too much at large meals. And so mm -hmm. like, that's the solution is, is when I pack my lunch for work, I pack in these little Tupperware containers and I, like, I look ridiculous at the end of the day. Cause at the empty ones, I just stack on the side of my desk and there's like, there's like 10 of them. Yeah. And it's like, what are you doing? It's like, well, each one is like five strawberries or, you know, two boiled eggs or like, it's just these little things. What's up, Sonia? Thanks for coming by. So. But my digestive system does a lot better with little amounts of food a lot more often. So I think it's about finding what works for you. That's my big takeaway. Is we, over the years, there's been all these different diets. And it's like, well, some people say they work and some people say they're lies. And it's like, I think both have been true. I think you've, we've popularized, like, right? Like a, like a gene trend, like boot cut is the trend or whatever. Mm -hmm. and like some people look really great in it and some people don't. And then we change to like the next gene, straight, straight skinny genes. And it's like some people look great and some people don't. What if we just had all the cuts in the store and you could wear the cut for your body type? Like, what if we tried that? I think, I think that's called that. Amazon or something like that, where you're just like, we have... It's not true. Like, I went in and asked for mine, and the, the little girl there, she goes, oh, we don't have those. That's exactly how she said it. And I was like, I really... And I was like, really? Because I, I want them. She goes, why? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Can, can you not tell I'm old compared to you? Like, you see all of this. You see the gray hair in the beard, the crow's feet coming down the eyes, the hair is coming back. Like, you see all of this, right? <laughs> I have money. I told you what I want. Do you have it? I didn't need anything else from you. Nothing like when you order a pizza. Or, like, that's the thing as a fat person. Like, when I would eat at a, at a restaurant, and it's like, then the waiter eventually comes back and be like, 
ah, I see you really enjoyed that. Or, oh, you clearly didn't like it at all. It's like, can I just like eat without any kind of commentary, please? All right. Yoshibi has just answered my question. We've improved and changed the textures for every field from every expansion. Nice. So when you're done with your adventures, please take some time and go back. We didn't finish every piece of gear yet, but we'll keep working on those. Mm. Gear will also better reflect the environment if it was clear skies, hint of blue, and so on. So, um, awesome. We have more polygons in the fingers and toes now as well. Great. I don't care as much about that. If I had to choose, graphics are not why I play games, but if I had to choose environment, like the, the grass is a way bigger thing to me than, mm -hmm. like I would take twice as many grass things and let the shoulder blade like clip right through the skull. Totally fine. <laughs> like, it's <laughs> fine. Um, that's why I think the hat thing on VR and stuff is so weird because like clipping is not something that bothers me. Let it clip. Uh, you know, but it's cool to know it'll be like places like Lemza on point, all your housing districts on point, like on point. It's going to be great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. They've added as many, uh, polygons as they could and now they're showing the fifth macro and they would like to confirm yes you're watching a final fantasy 14 live letter <laughs> uh valid question they're in a gridanian adventurers guild god i'm so excited about the ground texture ever since they announced it that's been the yeah. thing i'm most excited about the leather was the thing that surprised me. It was the thing that the leather gave me that pops. I didn't know I wanted. Yeah, the leather pops, dude. All right, so yeah, this is that Bill is May. beautiful. It almost looks like mossy as opposed to yeah. before. It was, it was like, oh, do like they is that grass or what was this? Yeah. Wow, dude. Imagine when that gets wet. <laughs> oh, I can only imagine. I wonder if their sound team got to update any of that. More oh. just squishing noises when you're in things. Mm. <laughs> it's the 8.0 update. We've added voice acting to all cutscenes. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that would never happen. Oh man, I couldn't talk about the amount of work. Not happen. Not that going forward, but if they went back and were like, hey, we've revoiced everything. either direction. Either direction. Look at the flowers. Chat wants to see the flowers. Oh. It almost looks un more unrealistic. There's so many more of them. And then I'm betting they move as you walk through them. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. It's actually less height variety. The 6.58 version has more height variety. Like there's short flowers and tall flowers and underbrush. I think, and we saw that kind of similarly with the grass. So I think that was just a visual effect just to try and make it look more there it is. populated, you know? Do it, run through them. Yeah. This moves. is going to make those moments where you're like in the brush with NPCs, mm -hmm. like, like Endwalker story and things like that. It's going to make those just so much more immersive. Like, I'll never run at this angle. Like, that's weird. But, you know, still. <clears throat> this is like you're trying to lose your character. Mm -hmm. It's a nice touch. 
That's a nice touch. I do appreciate it. <laughs> hey, man, I am not hating on sweet tea. I just, I've been avoiding sugar for a long time now. <laughs> all right. I've consumed all 54 grams of sugar. We're in for the long haul. And by that, I mean this needs to last another two hours, and then I need to fall asleep. We'll see how that goes. Yoshi is saying this is how they originally wanted these fields to look like. Yeah. So this is just making them more what their original vision was. Realize their original kind of artboard, I guess. Yeah, I love it. And WG dropping out saying oh, also spin. likes. Yeah. They, it looks like they always spun. I just never noticed that. Yeah. Thank you guys for the likes on the stream. It's a great way of supporting the content. And uh, we thank you guys immensely. I think it's going to make me notice things that I've never noticed before. Like even things that were always there. You're going to go, wow, that's different. It's like, Here, no, here's, no. Here's where I'm at. What does the exploratory zone look like? Like, What does Eureka look like after this? Because Eureka, I think, was just absolutely breathtaking already. And I think this is going to level up Eureka. And then for whatever new exploratory zone, because I, you know, no offense to Baosha, but I get the the narrative. We're at war. It's you know, <laughs> like you're fighting through the. No, it was different... all all of the stunningness of a like great war trench. Yeah, and so I'm hoping <laughs> that this new one is uh, it takes takes a full advantage of of these changes. So. The power of live. <laughs> Oops, didn't mean to show that. Everyone's always shows like his toolbar, and we see like minions that we're not supposed to see and stuff like that. Ideally, you just put them on a machine that doesn't have anything on it that you're not ready to show. Right. So. Come on. I think they spin more. They do. The old ones spun. No, they're just spinning at different times. I think they spin faster now. Hmm. All right. Hard to say. Yeah, the benchmark's going to be fun this weekend to see how it looks. The lavender beds are more lavendery. Oh man, <laughs> you thought housing was popular before. <laughs> <laughs> we did this so that housing will become a desirable feature. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why? Uh, Why? It's the one thing that I think everybody was like, oh yeah, how this was envisioned versus how people consumed it did not align up. Oh, now he wants to show some 7.0 stuff. Now, this Ooh. is normally reserved for more media tour, taking us into the new zones. Um, he is noting that obviously we will not be able to tell if he does show 7.0 stuff. That's that's what it looks like to me. Um, we won't know how much better it looks because we will have it's never always. had unupdated 7.0 stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Here's 7.0 running in 5, 6.58. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you'll never see this version which like you will if you turn it down yeah if you like, run a potato I assume the old stuff it is still used yeah like I assume you wouldn't just delete that out like you would leave it for your men's spec right maybe not maybe there's no way to do that but mm -hmm. it seems like you would like gradiate that um, all right. well, well he messes with anti-aliasing we will charge on. It looks great. Um, I'm more excited. June, end of June, beginning of July, when everybody else is, you know, I know not everybody will be there day one, but getting in July, I think, be an exciting time. Mm -hmm. Are they going to show us more people? You think they'll show us more NPCs? That'd be nice. I'd like to see that. 
um, runs through some like old school cutscenes, maybe. Mm. Right. The closer you get to an object, the more pixelated it will seem, but with the rendering methods, it'll be shown smoothly. Great. Uh, yeah. Hearing, so. so that is correct. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. 26-ish hours from now. That'd be awesome. I don't plan on changing my character, so... Yeah, I have I debated if I wanted to go back to, to Ronso. But I'm enjoying being my elf again. But I do like when I go see like uh, an old video. I was like, somebody was like, "Hey," because I was you know pulling up the macros for an old controller guide, and I was on my Ron. So I was like, "Man, I do miss that guy." I I just I get too attached to one character. Like my character that I've had since Aram Reborn is just mm -hmm. my character that I've had since Aram Reborn. Right. She's been the same character the whole time. You know, I, I when I went back to the story, I created a, a a lion bro, and like I liked him, but he wasn't my original character. Yeah. Um. So. Ten thousand. Oh. Seven three. <gasps> Two in a row. <laughs> Two in a row. Oh my gosh, that's so much for. Ellie Gaming with the resub for tier one for thirty six months of support. Thank you, Ellie. Appreciate that so much. the goal which i cannot display on screen what do you want? to stream Perfect. does does it not play it's play nice with the notifications oh play it's fine with the notifications i just have a, a like a little widget that kind of counts up on uh kind of the member goal oh so i just was like oh add it to it so i i manually updated we're 21 and 25 so if we get over 25 i'll gift out five to the community and then just kind of goes up from there. Sometimes, like, it's happens like bada bing, bada boom. And sometimes it's like, a eh, couple weeks. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. And so, back to uh, what I was also talking about with the exploratory zones, but also the Red the Alliance raid for Final Fantasy 11. I really, really hope that there's some areas of which that come on they man. let us in let me take you to pound town it's gonna be <laughs> awesome you're gonna love it you're gonna love it Siryu. quad 2006 amazing. thank Astounding. you so much for the uh with the resub tier one for 34 months thank you so much me too boom baby You ran into AJ Funny Man tonight at work. Don't know if you remember him, but he says hi. I unfortunately that is not drawing a blank. I'm drawing a blank on that. Chris, do you remember AJ Funny Man? Funny Man? No. Yeah. Well, tell him if you run into him again. Hello again. <laughs> Met a lot of AJs over the years. But I do miss the clips. I look forward to streaming more. Yeah. Thankfully, Carrie, we I don't think we have to wait long. You know, see how I think I don't know if they let you import your character, but you can always save your character data sometimes. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Welcome to the Let's chill and have some coffee. <laughs> Thank you. Uh Lace Nari uh, resub tier one for 21 months of support. Thank you. Thank you. One of the things I wish we could do with StreamYard is like implement stream elements so that way y'all could see all the goofiness that Chris put in to making these little alert notifications. <laughs> all right. Yes. So right now they're, they're messing with settings to talk about the to new show zone, right? like small objects and stuff moving. Um, smaller objects move the smaller an object is the more it kind of moves from you mm -hmm. um, and that's more obvious when you're when you're moving yeah so they're showing like it's supposed to remove jittering and stuff like that so should just help everything be a little more immersive all the time 
And Lathos, yes. I miss Final Fantasy XI too, and that's where the fact that then they announced Echoes of Anna Deals coming in as the Raid series. I was like, I have to play that. <laughs> I really want to see some more Eleven in 14, and I'm hopeful that uh, maybe, you know, if they tie it into the exploratory zone as well, that'd be really cool. Now, the thing we will not know for a while is is kind of any media or stuff. Um, so Arms is bad, that. okay? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Quad. Um, <laughs> so, I, I don't think they've announced anything. They did mention there will be a live letter after the meeting tour in May. Um, but And I would not tease about Final Fantasy XI stuff in Final Fantasy XIV. Echoes of Anadil is the announced Alliance raid. So the first chapter of that will kick off in 7.1. So it doesn't, the Alliance raid does not launch with the game, but that will be. So if we're thinking on four months, Chris, from July, August, September, October, most likely early November, right? You would, mm -hmm. you would anticipate for when that officially is playable. I will tell you that like, it sounds like the media tour will be smaller than last time. Um, yeah, a giant increase from Shadowbringers to Endwalker and the number of people included. And I was hoping they would level it up again. I think it's going to go back the other direction. Um, yeah, it's going to be more. I think it's going to be way more intimate. And that probably does mean uh, like I'm not anticipating an invite, namely. But I, I mean, we get Christmas cards from uh, the community managers and teams and like talk to them from time to time. Wonderful people. <laughs> but uh, at the end of the day, like there's also been a lot of massive creators who've come into the space. That it's like, yeah, you got it. <laughs> like, I, I get it. It's it's a numbers game. I, I would think it would be. I I would think that that live letter would be scheduled sometime between the middle and the end of May. Yeah, uh, middle of May seems like the most logical, because then you have a couple of you have a plenty of a big enough break to go into summer games fest time frame. And then that kind of really pushes everybody towards a uh, release, you know, because that's so. going to like when you think about mass market, you know, the E3 is no more and they usually always would show up for E3. I'll tell you my favorite part of media tours, um, the last two media tours. Uh, well, the one where we got to interview Yoshi P, favorite part of the whole season, but the second one we didn't get to interview Yoshi P. My favorite part was actually building the spreadsheet of everybody's questions. I found mm -hmm. that more fun than the media tour itself. Like, yeah, like the consuming. There was this the day the embargo listed lifted, and there was a hundred videos. I went through and I watched every single video, and I made a spreadsheet of every single question that was asked and what the answer was. Um, and then I sorted those um instead of sorting them by creator which is not actually that helpful right because each creator might mm -hmm. jump to 20 different topics instead it's like okay well let's take all of the ones on combat and put those together and that way we can start to get a cohesive picture because one person might ask a question about monk and he might talk about like well here's how this impacts monk but it's an idea that we have that spans across all mm -hmm. melee dps yeah and somebody else asks a question about tanks and he's like well this is all melee characters as a whole and you're like okay well putting those two together starts to help you kind of understand what their general mentality is yeah um, and neither of those interviewers were in the room at the same time mm -hmm. uh, so I, I i found that way more fun yeah now latho says ginger this is why i watch you bro although i'm not here as often as i want to no worries guys like <laughs> like find the way to enjoy the content on your own time that's that's why uh that's why we do what we do but he says uh especially when i used to chat with lono i still chat with with uh with lono uh and we've uh we've collabed a couple of times not as often namely because i like chris are in the working world and so my time and also then interest in topics uh namely because i don't cover like every Which doesn't display on a Rothgar. Game thing out there <laughs> What, was, what was this even Whoa, for? Oh, holy crap. Real Kitty Hawk dropping five community gifted subs over on Twitch. Let's see here. That's 25, 6, 7, 8, 28. Puts us to 28. And now the new goal is 50. Thank you. And let me gift out five. And it's so funny because YouTube will literally not let me gift from my dashboard. I have to 
click the share link, pull it up in another tab, mute said tab. <laughs> mute tab. Okay, good. I got it with enough, enough speed. And now I can officially gift out the membership. So thank you guys so much. That pushes us over the first member goal. And so good luck to anybody uh, who gets a gifted membership. So what he's showing right now is shadows. Um, and the closer an object and its shadow are, the firmer the lines. Mm -hmm. uh, so it leaves being further away. They naturally would blur out a little bit more. Um, this technique does consider the distance where a shadow is coming from. Mm -hmm. uh, and where it's landing on. This option can only be changed on Windows and Macs. Mac, um, PS5 will just have uh, highest as its default setting. Yeah. Uh, they didn't I think Xbox, Xbox Series X. I would assume the Xbox Series X as well. Instead of and calling they, it console, is that just a habit you think that they say PS5? Oh, probably. <laughs> it's been over, it was a decade of saying PlayStation. Like, yeah, we're done on Xbox. So yeah, it's 28, 29, 30. So you'll go to system config and graphic settings, uh, depending on the platform you you play on and then there will be settings and options um, but those will vary per platform thank you carrie for that dropping another five gifted membership over on youtube whatever you set will apply to every shadow in the game which makes Woo. sense that's why i think like going back is going to look really great so yeah. um you think we're, about like we're shadow bringers a, areas, oh. lots of shadows. Yeah. One more thing for us to enjoy when we're all watching Sprouts go through the story. So the mm -hmm. game's just going to look that much better. Um, I'm excited for a fresh Sprout season. It's going to be great. Well, and we're seeing a, a fresh Sprout season right now with a lot of the Xbox players coming into the game for the first time. Yep. I've been working on unlocking my achievements, but I, I went ahead and used my ultimate membership to get the starter edition. So, you know, storm blood and down. And then when Dawn trail comes out, then I'll buy that because I didn't want to, I didn't want to buy N Walker again. And then in three, in three months by Dawn trail, as opposed to like, all right, I'll just work on unlocking achievements on Xbox. But then the power to the TV area is out. And so I have to get that fixed. <laughs> so my, my Xbox series X is currently offline. Um, Yoshby did say he's he's seeing some comments in the various chats about people being concerned about their GPUs. Uh, rumor tomorrow is the benchmark. That is that is what it's for. Mm -hmm. uh, and so he's just reminding people like you'll be able to check for yourself. That'll tell you guys kind of where you feel you're at if that's the experience you want to have. And that gives you from now until June 29th to make any changes to your setup that you feel you need and can afford. Um. I will be running it on this PC at whatever it does. <laughs> so I'm not going to change my PC for it. Um, yeah, I'm perfectly happy with my PC. It's been great. I built it in 2020, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I built it November 2020. So, you know, it's... It's getting there. It's slowly aging. Um, this is a 3080 back when 3080s were like. Oh, wow. Look at the How did you water. get one of those? There it is. They said they were going to show water early. Way to become a version of you you can be proud of. Wow, Somebody that warrior of lights enjoy slaying. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Ratisu, thank you so much. Pushing us to 34. Um excellent absolutely excellent now does it play the twitch alerts over on the twitch side i guess not like yeah. I, like i'm seeing the audio i'm not seeing the video uh, because i can't overlay that i literally just have that up for the audio and i also have the activity feed because i didn't i didn't want us to be here going like oh because for some reason Streamyard does not show Twitch subs, etc., in the chat where it will for the YouTube. Oh. So it's like, all right, well, I don't want to be like, thanks for watching us on Twitch. We're completely ignoring you. <laughs> you know, it's like it just felt, you know, just not like the right call. All right. 
I'm getting you. Yeah, I'm thinking about uh, just like I man, the one announcement that I really want them to make is if they said that they made Eureka like a leveling, they added the ability that you're leveling experience uh in the zone. So like that would be something I would love personally to see. Because if for some reason I'm not under 210 and can't advance the story, I can go play in Bosja. I can't level up the classes. I forget the content creator's name, but one guy before he even stepped into the story got all his jobs to 90 by just playing through Bosja. And I was like, tip of the hat, dude. That's impressive. And now I'm like, maybe that's what I, well, I, wish I don't the know. The guy hit level 90 on. Fisher on a brand new character without ever leaving Limsa. <laughs> that was his rule. He wanted to see how much he could progress without leaving Limsa. Nice. Started in Limsa, stayed in Limsa, which was a journey. And then I watched a guy, and the same guy solo cleared a Realm Reborn. Mm -hmm. No duty support, no other players. Um, which that's a journey. Yeah. Because to clear Sistasha is like now this, like, <laughs> immense investment because you have to be able to clear it just by yourself unsynced mm -hmm. um my gosh looked looked hard yeah so some upcoming content schedules for us uh if you guys haven't been hanging out with us in a while welcome back we're really glad that you're you're here uh we've been doing the podcast every friday pretty freaking consistently honestly this has been our longest streak uh so far chris has taken a leadership role in that and we've been also scheduling some fun guests and we got some more uh collabs that are just going to be planned ultimately uh, if you guys give it a shot let us know we'd love to have you there or in the audio you can get to the audio version wherever podcasts are found via the top link in the description as well as the discord so if you want to get in beyond the video involved in the community uh, come check out the discord. We'd love to have you there. And, uh, and then this coming week outside, uh, obviously the podcast coming up on a week from now when we get to kind of break down all the cool stuff and more and all the reactions, um, on Tuesday, blue protocol is having their latest dev update. And that's another game that I've been covering on the blue protocol channel. And I actually just did a boot.dev sponsorship, uh, over there. So if you guys are interested in learning about coding, uh, go check out that video, click that link, and you can get some, you can save some money on uh, on learning how to code and go in Python. And as a developer, I'm a, it's it's quite impressive. Not sponsoring this, I just plugging that out there because I ha I don't work with many sponsors. And I was like, yeah, I like you guys. And I'm taking that money and turning, investing it into building my own game. All right, so they're focused on the eyes right now. What's going on with the eyes? They look bigger. They look more detailed. I think it plays well with the skin. And this is the thing. Like, I like the animation. It really kind of brings it together. Are they moving? No, I don't necessarily see him moving. I guess if he did an expression, they would. Huh. All right. Oh, thanks, Zach. Appreciate that. Kame puts us in some good company there. Some big names. <laughs> I have been trying to branch out my YouTube feed intentionally. And so I've been clicking on channels I've never heard of and trying to like watch two or three of their videos and get a feel for them. Yeah, um, just because in the 14 space, like there's been a lot of turnover and like um, I've watched a lot, I guess, the old guard for a long time. And then what happens is like I get this jaded view where I'm like, there's this type of content that I want to see and it's not getting done. Like everybody's doing the same thing. Yeah. But like it is getting done. It's just getting done by different people. <laughs> like So so it's a, it's a me thing. Um, so it was really nice to to kind of branch out. And did you see the newer faces? Did you see uh, Joker got his uh, his YouTube channel hacked? No, he got he recently just got it back, but we were retweeting all that stuff. That, oh man, what did they oh. do with it? Uh, they uh, crypto scams and stuff like that. They did the Fantastic. whole delete, yeah. So rebranding it, the whole thing, and 
Yeah. Fantastic. You got to wonder the level of effort that people put into that. Like there's got to be some, you it's know, it's got to work. It's got to work. There's got to be somebody. It wouldn't be worth that... it if it didn't work. Yeah. Um, different time, different place. That person's work ethic makes them a very healthy legal living. Um, right. Yeah. Like there, there has to be, I see that in some of these various like black market type things. Like there's this, there's these people that, I mean, they're putting in 40, 50, 60 hours a week yeah. and they're like building skill sets and they have a work ethic and they have like, they start at the same time every day and they, they work until they're tired and they're reaching out to peers within the space to improve and all that. And it's like, that's just a job. Mm -hmm. Like, like, you, like you're, it's not a shortcut anymore. Like yeah. It's just a job. Uh, Fido says yes the eyes are moving this might influence cutscenes and how characters show emotions so it's off during those same as G pose this is just a little detail we like to add and it only happens during your normal gameplay uh, do we need it probably not did we want it most definitely these little details create the world I wanted to show this because otherwise you might not have noticed uh, texture on gear has changed a lot. And Yoshi says like leather, which leather has been the one thing that yeah. Brian and I have consistently said, leather didn't know and we ground. <laughs> wildly improved. I did yeah. know I wanted improved ground effects. I did yeah. not know I wanted improved leather effects. Yeah. Um, it was so funny. Some people were so mad at us because we were just laughing at they were taking one hour to show a subtle chin change. <laughs> we're just like, what are you doing? And I was like, it's all going to come together a whole hour of like when they show it off in an in engine, you know, running in game. And I think it's going to look beautiful. And I feel like I was right. Just a whole hour of that. Stop it. <laughs> Ridiculous. So the water he was showing was in an area that he, the scenario team was, he said it was, he was making them nervous. Uh, how did he say? He said they, the scenario team would be quite upset. He said, if I turn the camera at you in a bit, the scenario team will be very mad at me. So we know we were somebody, somewhere. Oh, dude. Um, Imagine section nine, dude. I cannot wait to that's see. That's probably what it was based on yeah. the neon on the ground. I'm really excited about it. What do you. What are you linking there? I know. People Photoshop the cosplay. How do I copy his link within this? Um, because if I click it, it just puts it on the screen. I, I just have to go out to Twitch one second. Okay. Does that costume look uncomfortable? Oh, it probably is. It probably is. I would bet that that's. He said he he said earlier, but like in the pre-show, he said as soon as he put it on, he was hot. Like the like, like it's so. Uh, you see that, Chris? Yeah. Wait, thank you, Vito. There we go. That dude smokes a few packs a day. I know he did when we were around him. I think I think it would be hard to work under this much stress and not. Um, I think you told me like with substance. Well, especially like in high stress jobs, like sales jobs, like the, all the top performing sales people all have some kind of vice like every one every last one of them is something i was told when i first went to sales i had a really good first quarter and i was taken out by some of the veterans in the industry for drinks and they said pick your vice or it'll pick you and it doesn't have to be something that's bad for you like some of them are into like iron man's like it, mm -hmm. it just has to be something that can be consuming um so if you don't pick something that will consume your excess energy, because it's not fair to ask, because there will be days that you have so much of it and days that you have so little of it. Yeah. It's not fair to make it like, oh, well, I'm going to be like a really great dad or husband because it'll be inconsistent. So like it needs to be a thing that can come and go. Um, 
But why you did you pick Superman? We need to pick it. <laughs> why did you pick Superman? <laughs> um, so. I don't know. You gotta pick something. I felt myself gravitating to alcohol. But. Uh, there's been a lot of medical benefits to to marijuana. My uh, one of my really good friends uh, who lives, he's actually a pastor up in Tulsa. He was practically paralyzed. The guy just had he was in a wheelchair, but uh, the doctor prescribed him uh, marijuana, and he's out and about walking just fine, living life like normal. And he's like, I guess I'm a, I'm your po pops uh, pot smoking preacher <laughs> in Tulsa. Anyway. Hmm. There we go. I don't pay any penalty for alcohol. Um, like I've never had a hangover, mm -hmm. not for lack of trying. Um, I just, my body takes it really well as opposed to like, like I have friends that give a headache like during their first glass of alcohol. Mm. Like they don't even make it to the good part and they're already experiencing the bad part. So I can imagine your relationship with it as a substance would be very different. Um, so right now, as you speak, kind of goes through, uh, through this, they are saying that they're not even sure they can like point all the things out. Uh, and, and, and Yoshi P said that the dev team is getting nervous in the background. Mm -hmm. These are the new Ponto docs. Like that's what this is. This is the new, the new DGen docs. They're going to be right here hanging out. I was listening. I was watching some Ponto tonight, watching him do some Praetorium. Um, I'm really looking forward to just being more involved in the game. And I think I'm going to make it like my, my Friday goal. Every Friday. Yeah. Consume, consume some 14, consume some 14 community. I think that's the plan. Nice. Still kind of finalizing that, but with the work schedule and stuff, I've been trying to work out like, where does it fit? I'm enjoying work, but obviously being a full-time content creator had huge advantages as well. <laughs> uh, definitely a lot more time for game time. Definitely a lot more time for game time. But I was not getting paid a consistent amount every two weeks. So, you know. Lathos, you apologize for being late. What's the big sell on this update? You're on PS5. Is there anything in there for consoles? Yes. As a matter of fact, a lot of things like Shadows are going to be just automatically turned on for you, it looks like. You will have less settings to mess with than PC um, because, you know, a lot of people focus on consoles holding the game back. But in reality, the minimum spec for PC is is well below. It's pretty regularly well below what, what the consoles we support are. So they have to have the ability to turn it down as opposed to they can just kind of optimize for what console you're on. Um, so, yes, yes, there will be plenty for you. Uh, Benchmark will be live on Sunday and everybody will be kind of ready and able to blast through that and see what that is uh ishp said this is a place that would be really uh you can get to if you try really hard so maybe this is the top of a jumping puzzle mm. so what this is is this like some most likely there we were in a fan fest live letter the first time i made it to the top of the tower I've been trying for that tower for months and I made it like during the live letter during one of these, I think it was during one of these 14 hours. I think it was the digital one going into Endwalker. Mm -hmm. And I've been trying for years. I'd spent like whole streams trying to do it. And then I just did it. Oh. Endwalker was an interesting uh, reception because like, while I really appreciated the story, um it felt like a natural time to stop and i found myself well a wanting to play other games but then b getting some scary medical 
<laughs> uh, with it being diagnosed as pre-diabetic at that time and now no longer pre-diabetic. So uh, I'm looking forward to, to jumping back into Don Trail. I, I think it's going to be nice getting caught up, but it's been interesting for me to see the reaction that the community has had over time, both to my initial uh, initial announcement. And then like, uh, like you fast forward one year later and then all of a sudden it's like Zeppla and this, and uh, you know, everybody's like, yeah, we're all got to go play some other games. And even like, you know, we saw a gamer escape and, and uh, you know, different frustrations there. So it was just like, all right, it is, it is a good time that if you're burnt out, step away, you're not going to be punished for coming back to the game. The game welcomes people back all the time. And, uh, and then finally coming to Xbox, I think, was was, was a massive amount of uh, invitation back uh, into the game. I don't think it's only frustration that makes people take Like, I, I was never frustrated with the game. And well, your life, I like, you want to focus. Because other priorities took priority. Right. I, I, I never have really experienced that frustration. That's, that's the reality of when you let a game kind of like if you let a game kind of dominate at some point that you know that life will come and it'll, i think it's a big check so that's why it's like i would encourage people to make sure that they don't you know, like you know look at how many polygons all this fruit had man <laughs> my gosh it did say there was another tower over there that looked like you could climb as well so i think we're gonna have a lot of fun in this capital I will say the thing in my life that does not have moderation right now is running. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of running. Uh, this seven day period is 33 miles. The next seven day period is 34 miles. So it's been kind of just slowly stepping up. Um, but that's all building towards something. In June, I'm running a, a 50 mile race. And then we're going to kind of reevaluate and see. Uh, I was originally going to do 100 and then I, I pulled my back in January. And um, so I scaled back to just a 50 miler as the goal. Mm -hmm. And then we will evaluate if the 50 miler doesn't feel like an accomplishment. If it feels like I only did half, then I'll find a hundred and continue training. If I feel like that scratched the itch, then I'll move on. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of running. I'll tell you when people are like I could never, it's like you're choosing never. And I, and I think that's okay, but there is a difference between you can never and like you're choosing never um because it's only about 10 hours a week of training mm -hmm. but 10 hours is just a long time to run 10 or 12 hours but like you have 168 hours a week so even by the time let's say you sleep shower eat takes 68 of the hours you got 100 left you work a 40-hour work week you're down to 60 you got some commute in there grocery shopping whatnot let's put you down to 50 hours the average American watches 28 hours of television. Average MMO player plays, you know, 18 hours a week. So let's just go ahead and oh, take 30. No, no. Off. To, uh, to, to actually get you the numbers, the average gamer plays 7.3 hours of video games per week. And they don't have it categorized out by MMO. But I would scale MMO up to 10, 11 a week. So, so I'll you put know. you at 30. Yeah. Right. I'll, I'll dial it way up. So I'll put you at 30. That should cover people who raid. Okay. Mm, there you so go. now, so now we're, you still have 20 hours left over that's spent scrolling on your phone or just, yeah, if you want to get time back in your, around. in your life, oh, time's there. Apps. if you want to get time back in your life though, take all these different apps, uh, off your phone and it's, it's a night and day. Like, uh, obviously we just wrapped up, uh, Lent and Lent's a good time for me to always kind of like, all right, let me just delete this off the phone for a while. And see if i really need to, to have a return and, and to see my average use time on the phone go drastically down i was number 1854 to react to the grapes on on yoshi saying no more super than resolution um, super resolution will be implemented on all platforms uh, which will restore the image quality of low res to minim thereby minimizing uh, resolution degradation so that's graphics upscale. So I wonder if that, that should help. Uh, we're using some super techniques to improve, improve performance while enhancing these graphics. You can think of it as magic. I think that will also help like when you're going back and you haven't replaced all textures yet to kind of have an automatic upscaler. Mm -hmm. um, so, but that's really what it is, is Lathos, is it's been a two year journey of learning 
how to recognize self accountability and and work ethic as a as a trainable thing. Yeah. Um, and and a lot of it just requires really honestly differentiating between what are the things I could never do and what are the things I choose not to do. So when somebody says I can't run a marathon, I now no longer like that phrase. It does not bother me at all if you say I never want to run a marathon. That does not bother me. I don't judge you for that. I don't hold that against you. But don't tell me you can't. Um, you can. You're just choosing not to. And that's that's it really is okay if you're like, hey, I'm trying to learn a language right now. I don't want to spend time running. Great. That's awesome. Um, but there's a huge difference there in like taking that ownership and recognizing um, that a lot of times the say, things we say we want to do are really the things that we want to want to do. And that like minor difference there, it matters. Yep. Carrie writes, I took a break for Dragon Age and then Boulder's Gate 3, and it was great just to step away for a while, knowing I could pop back into the game at any time. And that's how Yoshi P continues to say it's a perfectly fine way to play the game. And I think it's when, uh, and, and, and I get the frustration because I've shared it where like, oh, but I don't want to stop playing. You know, I've done the things that, you know, everything, and I've tried the other things and either I liked it and I did it or I didn't, you know. So it's a, but it's, that's a, it's a healthy thing because, you know, it's, it's good to play other games and it's nice that Final Fantasy 14 bakes that into its core DNA. Quad, I got passed by people uh, when I was running my marathon, there were people coming back the other way. Um, you know, so like depending on yours. Um, and so like, it inspires me what people can do. Uh, so that is not at all what I meant. Uh, but you know, I understand there are there are times that we we have limits. Oh, they're adding DLSS. Uh, I do understand that, but the majority of the time, when somebody says, "I could never," um, they're overlooking like a significant number of of available doors. Like you're you're closing doors before you've tried to walk through them. And and like like I said, nobody's obligated to walk through doors. Like it is definitely not a requirement to do everything you're capable of. Um, there isn't time. But like people that want to do things, it just blows me away that there are people that have so many less, I guess, base traits than I do. Um, like when people that are at least partially paralyzed are able to do like the marathon that I did. I did my first marathon in December and, and it blew my mind how many people were capable of that um, from what felt like a harder position than me. Like it just shocked me. Um, you could train to do one in a racing wheelchair. Yeah, it was awesome. It was awesome. And there was these big steep hills. It was crazy. Late to the game is downloading the game. You may be late, but you're right on time. I hope you have a great <laughs> night. Um, there is plenty of time to enjoy the story. You don't have to rush it. Uh, it is a lot to get through AR. It is a chunk, yeah. So for me, a lot of times it's like, well, I'm just going to do this much per week and I have to check, kind of just treat it as a chore. Um, but you could also, like when I first came through, I ended up just skipping anything that felt like a chore. So whatever method gets you to the way you want to play, welcome back. Have a good evening. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Lavos is intentionally stayed away from 14 just to be able to enjoy it to the fullest. And you hope in a few more months, your two nephews and your nine year old will be able to play with you. There is never a better way to play games, in my opinion, than with those that you care about. Um, playing with people is always better. Always, always better. Um, and you wonder how it would go if you got back to running now that you're 60 pounds heavier from age and powerlifting. Um, the age thing is definitely a component. Like genetics and age are definitely very real things, but like there are also things you can't control. Um, and so I think <laughs> from my perspective, um, they get more attention than they deserve because even if they are a factor, you can't fix it. Uh, but like also like my knees feel younger now than when I was a high school athlete. Uh, and I like that blows my mind as I stare down the barrel at 40. 
Um, Mine do not because I've got knee injuries from football in high school and so. occasionally they act up and I'm like, oh man, come on knees. I've been doing a little bit of this knees over toes guy stuff and it is building back things that in high school, I had some knee injuries in high school and I was told there were some things that I would never get back and I have. And I, I, I think you had some worse knee injuries than me, but mm-hmm. like I was told that I had some permanent damage and I feel way better. Um, so... But you could walk a marathon, whatever, whenever you want to do, you know, um, whatever you want to do. It's definitely not a requirement. I found sprint triathlons were pretty accessible to a pretty wide variety of people. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, at my last sprint try, there was a blind person doing it, which was pretty inspiring to watch. Um, my wife did it with me, which was in my personal world, just as inspiring, uh, inspiring. She doesn't have any physical disability, but like, I know what it represented for her to get there. I thought it was incredible. Um, not as externally immediately recognizable as a challenge to everybody else. Cause she just looks like a normal, normal lady. Um, but I, I thought it was absolutely awesome. It was great. So, Let's see. Okay. So they went over the super resolution. Basically, it's a feature of GP- GPUs have, and they've implemented it into their game. Mm-hmm. Gonna be, you'll be able to adjust the number of grasses that show and if it helps improve uh, if performance. You'll need a magnifying glass to see the difference. Um, but you, you'd see it if you had one. Um, if you have a machine that supports this and want consistent FPS, I recommend keeping this setting on. But now they want to talk about PS4 and Xbox Series S, um, which has been kind of the question. What happens when you're on the bottom consoles, knowing that consoles get less settings? He said, with few exceptions, most of the graphics updates we show will also be implemented on PS4 and Xbox Series S. Um, Obviously, PS5 and Series X are better machines, um, but it'll be interesting to kind of see what that ends up looking like. Yeah. Um, You know, usually shadows and reflections are kind of your big and and level of detail, level of ground detail, level of clutter, clutter detail are kind of your three things that just like really seem to be the least impact for the most improved to frame rate. So I wonder how many options they'll do or if they'll just pre-optimize and you won't get to choose it. Um, so we'll see here. Zach is 40, tall and lean, harder for you to try to gain weight than staying thin. It's always been decent at running and things. Um, I always had trouble putting on size, like all through college. I lived with Brian's uh, brother and um, he's a bigger guy than me. And, you know, I had a couple of the roommates over the years that were all bigger guys than me. And I, I really had trouble putting on uh, size as I got out of college. I had, I really didn't have any trouble putting on gut, um, but, I, but I couldn't put on like, you know, like arms and like, I still don't have big arms, but I've gotten to meet some of you in person. And um, I'd like to think I was like 5% fitter than you thought I would be. Uh, but what <laughs> finally did it was, um, pushups and pull-ups. Like I spent, I spent many years, uh, in college in the gym. And then a lot of years after college, not in the gym, uh, that it, like, it just didn't seem to have any actual outward result. Like I got so much stronger and it just didn't seem to like change the way my shirts fit. I was still just scrawny mm. and, and for some reason, pushups and pull-ups, my arms blew up in like probably under 10 weeks, like just consistent pull-ups and push-ups. Uh, you know, I'd say every day, Let, let's call it five days a week. It was amazing. Um, but yeah, my wife completed her first sprint try. Um, sprint tries are not hard. So like, if you guys want to do it, it's a very achievable goal. Um, that's not to say you shouldn't be proud of it if you complete one, but like it is, it is absolutely doable. I promise you can. 
you know, especially if you, especially because like do athlons are things so like my sister-in-law had an ankle injury where like part of her ankle doesn't move right anymore. So she'll never run again. Um, so she could do something like, like a wheelchair or something like that, but she could also just sign up for a duathlon because she can ride bikes and she can swim. So you can just cut out the leg that maybe if you're, if you're literally physically incapable. Um, but the so he says, as briefly mentioned, everything that we're introducing newly to 7.0 will already have all these changes applied, but we didn't get to everything that we want to have in the game right now. So we started with the main things like job specific gear and the 6.0 job gear will get updated graphically in patch 7.1. So it is on the backlog. Stand up. Ugh. Okay. Job specific gear, uh, except for Paladin gear. Uh, we use that model data for a lot of testing. As a result, the Paladin gear is already updated. Okay. There we go. Um, is who's channel linked? Uh, so Brian and I co own Work to Game, uh, both the Twitch channel and YouTube. Uh, and we started it together many years ago, many August years of ago. 20, I don't know. When did we start work again? i say eight years ago, Stormblood, like right going into Stormblood. Uh, yeah. So a while ago. Um, and then Brian has since started Ginger Prime, which is spread into a network of channels so that he um because he covers a lot of different gaming topics and doesn't want to slam your feed with any part of that that you're not interested in so you can subscribe to the exact parts of brian's interests that align with you and then um i have gaming kinda which i don't really publish too regularly um chris has on seasons and off seasons when he's on he, he's got he just he just produces and then and then takes a break and that's nothing wrong with that i've always been like that i've always been really obsessive um, like right now my wife makes fun of me cause I'm on like a, like a waffle kick. Mm -hmm. So like I have waffles for breakfast every morning. Um, and I'll do that. And then one day there will just be a box of waffles that goes bad. I'm just doing the frozen waffles in the toaster oven. Um, and, it'll be, and then I'll go in through like a, a yogurt phase and I'll just have like two or three yogurts for breakfast every morning until eventually there's just like, she buys eight yogurts cause she's like, Oh, this is only gonna last a couple days and then they'll just go bad. Cause like, I'll be like, ah, yogurt, gross. Uh, <laughs> so like, um, Ego, no, uh, not Ego, uh, store brand, because I'll tell you what the amount of running I'm doing. We need the, we need the box. That's 10 waffles for a dollar 98. Uh, cause, cause, <laughs> cause depending on the morning and how many miles I've run, it's anywhere from like three to five waffles. So like, we got to trim that. We got to bring that way back. None of this yeah, none of the fancy. The, the kids no are organic, eating. No, the kids are eating too many waffles, like you know, and we'd get them on super discount. So we got a waffle maker, and we just make batter and just like churn them out. We were doing that, and then what I was finding is like, when I get behind on meal prep, then I eat processed. Like I, I do like fast food. So I've started saying like, store brand prepared is better than driving through McDonald's, both on my budget and my like overall health like it lets me control what i'm taking in and so you know we're buying fruit we're buying bag salads we're buying i've just started admitting that like if i have a goal i need to recommend i need to recognize that like making it easy to achieve is also part of it like it's not just having it it's it's about removing barriers blacklist improvements Woo. okay so he said, oh my gosh, we're behind on time. Uh, okay, we have 14 25 hours. minutes. Uh, yes, because they spent a long time on just visuals here. And as Brian and I have done with previous visual segments, we spent our time just chatting throughout it because it is it's like, I, I don't know. I get it. It's going to look better. Like, I'll see it when I get there. <laughs> um, I don't know how many of these commands work on the, the YouTube side. It's this, this multi broadcasting thing is, um, but we play on Sargatanas. Over on Ether. Um, there it goes. Uh, which is an original because Brian's a 1.0 player and brought me over at the launch of 2.0. Um, 
Um, so um, talked me into joining. Um, I was pretty sure 2.0 was going to be an abject failure. So I did join a month into 2.0 because I was absolutely positive that he was inviting me to a disaster. <laughs> so I was not here for launch day, um, but I was here shortly after. Uh, so it was, I don't know, four to eight weeks after, after launch when I realized like, all right, it might last like a little bit of time. Uh, <laughs> but like he was a 1.0 player. Um, yeah. I tried, I, I tried I like watching him play. He tried to convince me into 1.0 multiple times. And every time I would ask him questions, he's like, I love it so much. You got to play this game with me. I was a wild WoW player at the time. Um, and I would be like, is it good? And he's like, I mean, no, but like, it's, it's fun. And I'm like, okay, so you have like fun. Cause like, you know, um, like it's really enjoyable. I mean, no, it's not like there's, there's all these bad things. You can lose experience. And sometimes I log in and I log out and I'm worse off than when I logged in. And I'm like, what part of this am I supposed to join you on? Like, it's just a disaster. Uh, <laughs> so it looked love, like a hard thing to be late to. Yeah. And I love new world too. <laughs> and people were like, this game sucks. I'm like, I don't know, man. I like it. <laughs> I think if I hadn't been in an MMO, it would have been different. But because yeah. I was in WoW, it's like, well, there's things that sucked about WoW, but I'm I'm over those. Like, I'm on the other side. I have the mounts. I have the gold. I have the leveled character. Um, so they've enhanced yeah. the blacklist functionality. They've uh, added a mute list. They've added uh, a term filter, a state expulsion feature added, and then enhanced lodestone privacy. Very, very, very good. Um to improve player events, we've added a feature that will allow you to prevent people from entering your house, for example. Um, in addition to the blacklisted character's messages, the character model uh, will now also be hidden. Whoa. And then this will apply to all characters tied to the blacklisted character's service account, applicable to any character registered from 7.0 onward. The blacklist Fantastic. will distinguish between characters blacklisted before and after 7.0. Um, How funny would it be now if it's like very good. you were just having fun trolling your friend and he blacklists your troll character and then you have to go back to him and be like, I'm so sorry, that was me. <laughs> I've been screwing with you for years. years. And now they've Now they've finally... That's so interesting because that that allows like the not at the wide scale of like the Asmund Gold type stuff, but the, it allows that kind of behavior to just like if somebody's being yeah. sick and on a on a like standing on a quest giver, you can just block them and then it'll just they're like, gone. They're gone. Um, now, WoW does that a little better and that they can create a ring around something where that's happening inside that ring. So like nobody appears within let's say five yams of a of a of a quest giver or something, so that you can kind of like walk with the quest giver, interact with them, and all that. So when you're when it's weird because when you're in a party, you'll be running up to it and like it, you see people drop out. Um, but obviously, like the the Asmund Gold level of trolling that he received was required a more systematic banning <laughs> he's toxic we gotta we gotta get him out of our game let's do so by being doing a, be, being the only yeah he's not being toxic but allow us to be toxic towards him because of the potential that he might be toxic uh, <laughs> okay <laughs> um cool blacklisted characters will be displayed in certain situations where visibility is necessary such as party together when a duty uh, even when their character model is visible, their name will display as unknown in the party list and on their nameplate. Furthermore, notification will indicate when they speak in duties and players may elect to temporarily see what they've uh, written via subcommand menu. We understand concerns that ask just to prevent matching with those players, but that would make the system a lot more complicated. Sorry. Um, you can hide a muted character's chat messages, and that will apply to all characters on a muted character's service account. And then muted characters' names will display. Uh, when they're on the mute list, their their names will display as normal. Oh, it just shuts them up. So if somebody's being loud in a party, but you want to keep healing them or whatever, 
you can just say like i just don't want to listen to them talk um, <laughs> good oh that's so funny though so for most things you'll probably use the mute list if it gets and then if it gets really bad you'll use the blacklist i agree with that most of the time it's like i I don't care where they're standing and like, I don't mind being in a party with them um, because most of this game can be done without speak communicating. Yeah. I just like, I don't mind being in, I don't mind if they're in my duty roulette every day. Like they're, they're tanking fine. It's the crap they're saying in chat. That's bothering me. And like, I can minimize chat, but like maybe I'm using chat to like whisper back and forth with Brian or whatever. And like, it'd be nice to just like, I just want to shut you up. <laughs> like, just, like, like just stop. Um, uh, no, oh, Lathos. We we do this to talk with you guys. So so we love we love seeing you guys here and and hanging out and chatting. So it does not matter if you want to send a thousand messages or one message or no messages. We for the, all the lurkers out there, you guys are great. Now characters blacklisted at any time prior to seven point will be carried forward. Up to two hundred characters can be registered. Data is stored server side. Characters will remain blacklisted across all platforms, but as character names are saved client side, their names will only display on uh, when playing on the device they were registered on. Um, but the blacklist is is 200 characters, and the mute list is 200 characters. Um, mute list is stored client side, and characters will only be muted on the device they were rich initially um, registered on. So it's not quite as powerful of a tool. It's still, this is a massive improvement. We've needed a ma a, an upgrade to this tool for a very, very long time. And if he follows us up with friend lids list improvements, that would be great. So for people that run into an issue, they get to the 200 limit. What I wish you could do is tell me like how often, like when were they last on? Because if I have to clear that list, I want to unban or in the friends list case, I want to unfriend um, people who have not logged on in... 13 months, 18 months before people who like played right before that. Um, and then you'll be able to filter out certain terms. Um, good. This seems great. He said, you wonder about playing at the workplace. Uh, and all of us do. Japanese media plays uh, games at their workplace. Good. State expulsion feature. So, so I, I would love to see that, that that kind of filter added. That's such a small thing, but I know that's um, quality of life things are usually mid cycle. So usually, if you see quality of life things like that, that's because they'll do something like this. They'll get a lot of feedback, and those are usually rolled out in like a 0.35 or a 0.45 patch or something like that. That can be a little more quality of life driven, as opposed to 0.05 and 0.15 are like rounding out major structural things that Dawn Trail rolls out with. Um, you know, keeping the content on time is more important at this stage in the cycle as opposed to 0.35 yeah. and 0.45 is about the train's already rolling down the track. Like we got time to settle ourselves and get really comfy. So that's when we get, that's when you get things like adventure plates. That's when you get things like improved menus and, and stuff like that. If we ever got you know, when we get things that make materia easier to deal with or inventory easier to deal with, that's usually going to be your mid-cycle patches. Uh, <clears throat> the UI team around the expansion is just so busy developing any new UI stuff. Mm -hmm. Free company masters and estate owners will have access to this function. Free company masters and estate owners can designate up to four free company members or housemates to have access to this function. When players with expulsion privileges are in the estate, anyone registered to their blacklist will automatically be expelled when attempting to enter the estate grounds. Whoa. And that's 800 people. Mm -hmm. Assuming they haven't all banned just the same person. Neat. Auto expel is really neat. Uh, so, oh wow! Zach, I let my I let my house lapse, and like it was an immense 
weight off my mind because I wasn't using it enough to be justified. So I let it lapse. Sorry. I was actually busy playing on another character at the time. So like I was still active, like I'm still actively subbed right now. I just wasn't playing on my character and then visiting my house. You can't just be logging into the game. You have to be logging into your house. So I let it lapse by accident, but like, I don't regret it. It's fine. Yeah. A lot of people describe it as a very freeing feeling because <laughs> they're like, Oh, I, I have to feel like it becomes this chore because you're so afraid of losing it. And it ends up feeling like, like, I guess if, if all of us, everybody's was like, all right, we'll just let it go when I let it, when you let it go. And then you would come back and be like, all right, I got a new house, but it is what it is. Cool. And you can also block list on the lodestone. Wow. Now this is quite a task to block everybody across everything all the time, but it is available. There you go. Ideally, it's just for that one or two people that are just making your life worse. Yeah. There's some weird stalking that goes on in communities like this. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, not just Final Fantasy XIV. No, 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 no. Like, just, yeah. just MMO, just digital online communities just create some weird ability to invade each other's privacy that are hard to enforce. Mm. So. Cool. I think this is awesome. Um, so much of this is just little things that I, I think are going to really improve some of the community stuff. It won't be perfect, mm -hmm. but it's a step in the right direction. All right, so that's it for blacklist updates. We looked, we decided to implement this a little over a half a year ago. I mean, I think it makes sense to roll this out with uh, once the Xbox version and stuff was stable. I think rolling this around a platform release would have been bold. So they've been busy. They've done an incredible amount to get ready for this expansion. If we didn't get Xbox for Dawn Trail, I didn't think we were ever getting Xbox. Right. Because like, the reason we didn't get it for Endwalker was because PS5 came out, and so that felt justifiable. But there wasn't going to be a new PlayStation platform for Dawn Trail. Mm -hmm. So I think this was right. For a couple of days ago, there was like this obviously rumor mill going around that Microsoft was in the final stages of buying Square Enix. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I just like for me when I when I saw that it's like I know they view every screen as an Xbox like they'll put their games they're going to have keep their games everywhere but I was like man just get the popcorn cuz if that if that ever if they did pull the trigger and and did that the uh the online reaction would be there would be a level of entertainment it until fine. it was too stupid. It would be fine. Yeah. Cuz so far they've proven that the successful franchises that in the games they purchase, they really do leave alone or if anything, they empower them. Um, and that the franchises that need a little help, like they're going to put wow back in China, um, which seems like wow was not in China because Bobby, <laughs> Bobby, Bobby yeah. and friends couldn't, couldn't be professional in a work environment. And like that's not to say the other side is being professional, but like in business, it's not about is the other side professional. It's can you be? And like it was a huge amount of money for shareholders. Um, so like whether or not you agree with China as a country from a business standpoint, to to lose something like that was a was a huge revenue drop for the game. Um, and you look at the general yeah. success of like Season of Discovery and like imagine what it could have been if it was truly still pretty worldwide and lathos i don't know how long you've been away but they also have added in new game plus as a feature that'll let you go and on your character kind of relive that without having it on another character but um obviously another character is how chris has been playing through the story as well 
I found that was really nice because not everything's in New Game Plus. And the other thing is I wanted to know what I both had and hadn't done. And so when I log in on my main character, if I'm not having fun in a story, tribal quest, side quest, whatever, like I'm just not in the mood to do story, I can just hit the escape key and I don't have to worry about it. And on my story character, like it's only for that. And so like I log in and if I don't feel like doing story, I just log out. Like that mm. story is only for that. Yeah. And so that character's not in a hurry. It doesn't have to be geared for anything. It doesn't. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, it's only there for when I want to do story, and that's its sole purpose. And every quest that is not completed, I haven't done yet. Um, so it's a really clean measure. Um, and it actually allowed me to enjoy my main more, because then I felt like if I wanted to just, like, use a quest to help finish off a level on an all, on a class or something, I didn't have to, like, force myself to enjoy lore when I wasn't in a lore mood. Because I knew that quest would still be there when I get there on my other characters. So I think it, it freed up my main quite a bit now that is admitting that then you have to level everything twice so like mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely more work but for those of you that already have like an omni i i think it was i should have done it sooner i don't think you should do it when you like i first downloaded the game but i definitely should have done it sooner than eight years or whatever the math is mm -hmm. <laughs> schedule for dawn trail looks like the final fantasy 6 collab ending on may the 8th ish i'm assuming and then uh, the Yokai Watch making a return, going all the way to June 26th. Yokai Watch, my goodness. Moogle Treasure Trove, uh, Tomes. That'd be May the 14th. All right. I still haven't done the 16 event. I have till what, May 2nd? Yeah, May 8th, according to this. Okay. Yoko Watch is a journey. Mm -hmm. And if they're doing it like last time, last time they rolled out new stuff, it wasn't like the Final Fantasy 15 event or whatever where they just re-released it. It was released with new stuff for people that had already done the old one, but then they left the old stuff in. So, like for new players, that event just got bigger. So, if they do that again, Yokai just becomes this enormous event. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, where do we do the media tour? Is what Yoshi just said. Okay, so let's see if he'll release the date publicly on what the. They're going to do it in Los Angeles and in Potsdam. Um, okay. On the calendar. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. So that means that I mean in NA, like they're LA based, like there's a Square Enix thing, but so like that it makes sense that it's always California, but um, okay. The only thing about starting a lore character is you don't have flying. So so the media tour will be in person again. So definitely limited unless they choose to have a digital component to it. If it's entirely physical, it will be a lot less people. Um, expect it to be, let's say 20, 20 channels, 30 channels, something like that, as opposed to last time was like 60 or 70. Because mm -hmm. um, they'll also want to save space for the, the IGN polygons of the world. Um, oh. So produce her live letter on the 16th of May. Yeah. If that's following the media tour on the 15th, so that's following them. Is that, I guess they'll go over the job trailer and then they'll have the embargo for like, and they'll have the embargo. So they'll yeah. show the job action trailer and all the people that can comment on it. will will keep their mouth shut. And then when will they, are they going to announce the embargo date publicly? There's no way. 
So they'll do job action trailer while people that's weird okay so when you and i did the media tours we were like shown the job action trailer like we were basically shown a mini version of live letter then we experienced the game mm -hmm. then there was an embargo then the embargo lifted and there was like a public live letter for everybody else no so the public live letter happened even in our case uh like either a couple of days after or uh what have you we were traveling back and on the plane oh you're that right letter. we were watching uh, that we already from seen the plane. It. we had already seen it so what we and were we weren't going to cover it live because we were on a plane and then the same <laughs> yeah. and then we, and under nda um and so then uh but we were able to gather what people were saying and then we were able to address that in those videos that, that we were able to make because this is a lot they, a lot of people were mad about the tank changes and you know calling the game shadow casuals and so we kind of talked about it in the end i think they kind of were right but okay flying like mounts yes you won't have the access you won't have access to mounts in the same way you won't have flying mounts in a realm reborn until you complete a realm reborn as opposed to if you do it with new game plus you will be able to fly in a realm reborn so that's the downside is that characters is that characters bound So I was yeah. like, which Raider tank will get blacklisted by Square Enix this time when they leak to friends? Hopefully nobody will will leak, but chances are they will it will leak. I'd like to think that it was somebody who just wanted to get feedback from somebody in their raid group. Like, hey, I'm talking through this. Will you look at this with me? But mm -hmm. I really think it was dumber than that. I think it's somebody just had to be the cool guy. Like, look at this thing. And look you know, what I know. Nah. Look what I know. Because I recognize that being under DA is really lonely. And, like, I got to be under NDA with Brian. Yeah. So I wasn't lonely in that way. And we yeah. did a collab with a couple other people that were under NDA with us. Which was also really nice. So they want a 48 hour maintenance. It's a two day. That's okay. That's what it was last time. They say it's going to be huge. They want to make sure everybody has enough time to download it. Huge. It's going to be the bigliest. Huge content. I launched. walked in and I said, that patch is huge. I said it. I said it was the biggest patch. <laughs> And the patch was huge. Uh. <sighs> All right. So we have a schedule. Good. I'm really excited that they announced so much of this um so clearly i think the in-game engine presentation was absolutely what i, I was that's what i wanted to see in the lot in the uh in the keynote you know because it's yeah. like oh my gosh and that so i feel like and we knew that we knew like once we they were only showing yeah, I'm ready. parts i'm ready i mean we'll have we'll have two more live letters and like job action will be a big one but beyond job action like i don't think i need anything else i don't know if you still feel you need anything else but beyond job action um and like the tooltips without the content is always a partial picture yeah uh so like from my perspective i think i'm i think i'm ready i'm ready for you know Go focus on getting my office cleaned up, focus on getting my running kind of squared away, getting my schedule ready, you know, do a couple of test streams, make sure that the new desk location and the streaming setups all running well. Mm -hmm. um, these are the Hue LED light strips. My wife got them for me for Christmas last year. She got me a strip of LEDs and I'm kind of fiddling with them. So, um, yeah. 
I'm excited. So, I think, I think the 48 hour break makes a lot of sense. They don't do pre-patch like WoW, so there isn't really a way to like trickle it out. Um, so they, they do offline maintenances. I think, I think 48 hours is logical. Wow's is really impressive. Like when you think about the technical scale and scope that wow doesn't take servers offline for the, the expansion to go live, that you can just be logged on and you can just like roll right into the expansion. Um, it's unbelievably impressive the scale at which they can make that happen. But they also have a huge issue with data mining. Um, and they lean into it with their test servers. So it's just a different way to manage your data. And I think a lot of that is that they don't feel as protective of their story, um, which shows until, you know, fairly recent news, they, they have not put the same focus on story. I think they, they tried to in the last, ex the last two expansions, I think have tried to be better about story. It doesn't mean that like, you know, is WoW good? I think WoW's a great game. You like what you like. I think WoW's a great game. I think it's headed for some really cool stuff. You know, it's had ups and downs, but like in general, I like it. It's, I, I was there at the beginning. So like, it's not as, like I have some nostalgia to cover up some of its blemishes. Mm -hmm. um, That's what nostalgia does. So, but I, I think there's a lot to enjoy there. I see YouTube videos from people who are just, you know, I tried WoW in 2024 and I had a blast. Like, I, I see those videos. Yeah. So WoW is much like Final Fantasy 14 because 14 was kind of based off of that model, that theme park design. But if you're playing Star Wars Galaxies and Final Fantasy 11, that's sandbox design. And that's where I come from as well. So there's going to be like, you know, if you if you think of 14 or if you think of WoW now as playing through, you know, a, a, a campaign and then you have all these other things going on, then that makes sense. <sighs> So that Aether Rights reach does not include 7.0 Aether Rights. Going to 100, baby. <laughs> you need to add 12. Um, I, think it's, I think it's really hard to join a friend in these games. It just puts so much pressure on them and you um, that it's equally hard to do it without a friend. So, so like, I, I think in a perfect world, you join with a friend who's joining with you. And so like, I think a lot of my fondest memories, like joining 14 to join, like to, to play with Brian was hard because I was doing all this story and he didn't have to do story. Right. Uh, and so I became a story skipper because the best way to catch up with Brian was to just push the escape key all the way through so that I could raid with Brian. Um, and so, and I was okay being a story skipper because I came from wow, where you can skip all the quest text. So like, that it encouraged that behavior um as opposed to when i got into wow i got into wow with my brothers and we all got into wow together uh, all three of us at the same time and so we were all discovering and comparing level 30 to level 40 level 50 you know um, 159 hours of cutscenes so i think that's different um wow wow has chosen to tell its story kind of like warhammer 40k where they've chosen to tell it in novels so they've taken it out of the original media medium so like there is story in game just like there's story in your codexes but in in warhammer 40k but the bulk of the narrative is actually taking place over in a more narrative format which means anybody who doesn't buy i think they have like 42 novels or something stupid um anybody who doesn't want to read the 42 novels um doesn't get access to it. Uh, and so then it, you know, and th this isn't trying to compare quality or caliber or whatever that gets really subjective really fast. And, but like just quantity to quantity, like their story is outside of game. So like, even if wow was, Oh, I think wow story is better or whatever. Like it wouldn't matter because it's not in the game. Um, I will say like final fantasy having started trying to get into wow story, 
Um, after I got into Final Fantasy Story, I started trying to go back and get into WoW Story. WoW Story is a lot more macro. So I feel like I'm learning about these like races and these places and things like that. Um, as opposed to 14 focuses on these individuals. And so I, I get these really intimate stories. And I think that Dragonflight did a lot of that where they're, they're, I learned about some of these individual people and I cared for them. And then and then I watched things happen to them that were good or were bad. And like I felt for them in a way that I was told WoW couldn't do. Um, but my understanding is that's a shift for WoW. That's new. My understanding is that was not like that in previous expansions. And I, I can't speak to that because um, I haven't tried to go back and play classic for the same way. Um, but like that's that's 14 the whole way through. And I actually find that frustrating sometimes when I want to learn more about a group of people and I can't like like they're I'm like, hey, can I learn more about this group? And they're like, well, there's this one guy and this is what's going on in his life. And I'm like, OK, is that normal? And they're like, well, we're really focused on the one guy. Uh, <laughs> so it's just a different method. Um, and I think having 42 novels would be something really cool for 14, but that should be an optional way to supplement the story. That should be, here's the base story and this is the long version. It should never be, you have to buy a book to play a video game. Um, but it does kind of make me go, wow, imagine, imagine if there were novels on the Allegan, on the fall of the Allegan empire. Mm -hmm. Right. And like the 14 story is your, is your canon, it's your core. Um, but I would love to read a book on the fall of the Allegan Empire. Uh, and that's something that WoW would have the option to do. WoW could tell their writers, hey, we got an expansion. It's going to be really Allegan themed. Put out a novel on the fall of the Allegan Empire. And they could do that. Um, and that's not, you know, this is the total weight of materia melded in the last year. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Neat. So I, I think the biggest issue with WoW lore is that they built a game and then tried to add the story in later. And story is not required to enjoy 14. But if you are going to have a story in a game, it has to be written first. Um, it's kind of like preparing Thanksgiving dinner. You have to put the turkey in the oven first. Uh, in, in at least with the things that we lay out for our Thanksgiving dinner, big holiday in November here in the United States, because it takes the longest to cook. And there are people in my family that don't enjoy turkey, and so they don't eat the turkey. But the turkey has to go in the oven first, even if not everybody's going to eat it. And so the story has to be the primary ingredient in building a 14 expansion, even if players who have been around since 1.0 don't care about story. I mean, there are people like um, Xenos that have been around since 1.0 and, and story has never been why he's played. And th and we don't get to say, well, he, then he does, then he's not a real player. Um, story, story is, is maybe 300 hours, 400 hours of this game, 500 hours of this game. And you have people with 10,000 hours of playtime. So like story inherently cannot be the primary reason to play because it's 300 over 10,000. Like, like it's just, then what the hell are they doing for the other 9,700? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so like it, it cannot be the be all end all, but it can be important. Um, and wow, just didn't give that opportunity and they tried, but they've had to try so late. So they started in, they started doing kind of a, a campaign story in Warlords of Draenor where there were these moments where it's like, Hey, we're just going to have everybody come in and do this little bit of story. Um, so it'd be like kind of doing the raid storylines in 14, but they didn't really make any sense because you hadn't done any of the context. And then in the next expansion, um, which was Shadowlands. Is that right? Am I getting these right? I don't know. Um, no, it, BFA. Thank you. Oh, BFA. I'm getting there. So in BFA, they had what was called a, a war, like it moved to from campaign quest to war campaign, which was like, after you play through these compartmentalized zones that kind of told a story on their own, there was this like thread that was like a required quest line, which is better, but still not there. 
Then we moved into Shadowlands, and and like now we're building into basically having an MSQ. And it's going to be a minimum amount of quests in every zone done in a mandatory order. Then we get into Dragonflight, and now we have a mandatory MSQ with small quest hubs that tell intimate stories that carry you through caring about small people that are metaphors for larger stories within the zone as a whole. So like they are getting better at it, but it's been it's been iterative and 14 started out with a big powerful story and got to iterate from a really strong point i mean arr people complain about arr because everything after that is so good but there are like you can you're allowed to enjoy arr just how it is so like it's an incredibly strong first chapter and then they got to build on that from there um, so by the time you get to something like Shadowbringers, you've gone good to amazing, as opposed to they've had to start from nothing and just build that up from the ground up. So I'm hopeful with Metzen and stuff all around that I'm, I'm hopeful that, that WoW can become something really great over the next three expansions that they've announced. Um, so it's just different. They're just different games. So these are favorite mounts. Man, Mega Shibu really brought in the money. Good for them. Fan Rear was given out as a Fan Fest mount, and it's faster. It's physically faster on the ground than other mounts, so that seems unfair. Mm -hmm. So it may not actually be the people like it, as opposed to the Fatter Cat's just adorable. And then Company Chocobo that's free right mm -hmm. well yeah and that's the and first one you get yeah interesting would have been fun to try to predict that number one has double the votes of number two that makes sense favorite minion <laughs> My lore character carries around Midgard Stormer. And then my main has changing class macroed. So every class has its own minion. Um, am I able to read that? Read what? Uh, he's uh, he's asking about the Japanese. We're just reading the, the non Japanese uh, there's a, text. Oh, no, no. There, there's a live translation. There's a live translation set. Yeah. We, do, uh, not, we do not speak Japanese. Reddit community puts out a. Um, I am definitely not fluent in Japanese. I've started the Duolingo for it. I'm definitely not fluent. Um, we are reliant on this. Yeah. Uh, Coogan put out a thing, God, it was probably six months ago now, that said, like, what are you guys doing with your time away from 14 if you've chosen to spend less time in 14, whether you're on break or whatever? And I said... I've been doing some Duolingo um, and Japanese as part of that. And uh, he said that was a really, like, he, he goes, oh, I never even thought, like, like that just, that one seemed to catch him off guard. <laughs> now, that Lesser Panda, you can win the entirety of Lords of Verminion with that Lesser Panda. Starboard, no way that's favorite. Is that favorite based on usage? That thing is rare. There's no way. Isn't it based off of votes? That's got to be votes. That can't be based on what people have. I believe people have all those other ones. There's no way that many people have that starboard. We can go check the achievement data. The Starbird is a Endwalker dungeon drop from the one that you're out on, like, Golden Fields. Um, it can only drop for people that don't have it, which is great. But what that means is it's it's like a 1% chance of drop or whatever. Uh, so early on in the expansion, it really sucked because you run it 100 times. It drops once. For, that's not really how odds work. But you, it drops once, and then you don't win the roll. Um, 
it's a bind on pickup, so like you can't sell it. So nobody else can roll on it if they already have it. So now if it drops, you might actually get it. But um, and it was a big meme in the Ponto community because of its just impossibility. He was running it once a day and not getting it uh, <laughs> so, for a long time. For a long time. There's something lost when somebody like that actually gets what they've been desiring. Uh, Limza, shocker. <laughs> See, this I would believe is just based on actually going and pulling the data. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, number three is Ponto's chat. <sighs> it's a good main city. The Aetherite's really close to the market board. It's got nice music. It's got great light. Like, it's a really nice... It's well laid out. You can easily get to, um, like, the hunt board stuff. Like, like... Old Charlian is a solid contender for just optimal. Um, so, I think Uldah is a good choice. Most formidable foe. It's kind of a fun little idea they've done. Mm -hmm. I know I'm fading though. <laughs> I don't think we have anything to summarize, really. Not really, which is good. If you want to do that, like I'll let you. But I'm gonna. I need to make sure I sleep. Um, I. Do you have to go to work at some point in my life? Yeah. I want to watch this stuff though. I think this is fun. But at some point they're gonna pan over. Mm -hmm. All right. If we limited to field areas, it would have been Tempest, Elpist, Central Quarthos. They said if you didn't finish story, look away. Meh. Interesting. Getting close, getting close. Did they say anything big? Uh, benchmark Sunday. Benchmark Sunday is the takeaway. We've been live for three hours, and that's that's ninety nine percent. And the in game visuals they showed, you know, they showed off the in game the... visuals. The benchmark will show you that. Benchmark Sunday is the summary of the evening. If I had to sum the thing up in, you know, two or three words, Benchmark Sunday gets you there. It's got to be our boy last, right? Yeah, yeah. Had to be. Had to be. That is one of the best moments I've experienced in video games, period. That guitar riff right before. Oh, 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 oh. Had to be. I think I would know this list was total crap if that was not the case. Immediately. That's that's not even like me admitting other people's realities. Like that just it doesn't make it. You want to see a sprout stream get maximum tune in this list pretty much does it it's in this order right before hades is when like somebody's like well i normally have like in between 13 and 100 people watching me and then there's 5500 people in there right before that <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it's a good indicator that something big's about to go down <laughs> uh yeah shinryu was uh 11th and if they added that with xenos it would have been fifth okay hey Firim, how you doing the tag clown these are such corporate BS. This is such like, I hate these things. They just feel like synergy. I, I think because that's, I think that's because that's what they've been used for so many times. Yeah. Like guys, this really explains our culture. We put this in automatic generator and this is really going to help us align our culture. 
I have not played Rebirth, by the way. I, I'm still playing through uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake for the first time, Zach. I will be playing Rebirth later. I've been playing uh, Dragon's Dogma 2 a lot. I'm really enjoying that. And I'll be playing No Rest for the Wicked this week, uh, this coming week, which I'm really looking forward to. We asked what kind of place Final Fantasy XIV to you is, and you guys just answered Soken. It's in the bottom. It's in the middle, second from the bottom. Uh, that's funny. Soken. I just, I don't know what these are supposed to tell me. They always just feel so... It's the friends you made along the way, which I'm not saying that's not true, but it just feels like very like Captain Planet. There was a short play on YouTube that popped in my feed, and this guy, he was a he's like a solo travel blogger, and he talks about this is what you don't see. And you see him set the camera down and jog down to the bottom of the stairs, and then he turns around and this like slow music starts, and he's like, You just need to set and it's like this deep thing as he walks back up the stairs really slowly. It's like like it's just so shattering to see the thing right before that. Um. <laughs> uh. Cool. So what's next on the schedule? Um, yeah. they're gonna do a real life minions thing. All right. So now they're moving into the. Uh, yeah. QBC. Okay. QBC, guys, um, for anybody that has not watched Live Legends in the past, it's usually where we dip out and do our, um, we usually leave it on in the background and do our summary. Uh, however, I think this evening the summary is effectively benchmark. Benchmark Sunday, I believe. Graphics update. Cool. Uh, that'll Some show you. Live. There are going to be two live letters between now and the expansion. Uh, one of them tied to the media tour. That'll be a job action trailer. Um, and then one final one. Uh, that'll be when they keep reminding us that there's going to be a 48 hour uh, downtime going into the expansion. Uh, other than that, you know, there's all sorts of things like Yokai Watch and Mukul Tombstone events and all of these different things to enjoy for those of you that are subscribed. They are all wildly optional, in my opinion, much more optional than like a WoW pre patch event. Um, so they are, are wildly optional. Um, play the exact amount you would like to play. Uh, the graphics update will affect the old zones, and it will work on consoles. So the game should just get prettier across the board. Um, ground effects and leather uh, seem to be the big winners. But the shadows and, and all that skin and all that should, should still look really great. Fingers, all that. Um, there's a lot of little quality of life changes. They did some stuff with... Um, changing blacklists and mute lists and lodestone stuff. Um, they, they, you know, they are working on things. Um, that's about it. I think that's, that's kind of it. I really think it's benchmark Sunday is, is the highlight of the day. Yep. So I think at three hours, guys, that's been about Brian's, Brian's cook temp at a typical stream that doesn't start late at night. Yeah. So I think we're going to lose him soon. Normally, if I was full time <laughs> still, I would party on for another 10 hours. But um, I do want to say thank you again to those of you that made it possible for me to go full time for uh, multiple years. Mm -hmm. um, really did change my life and will always change my perspective on this community, this game, and, and just gaming in general. Um, but I am back in the workforce because I need to set aside for retirement because I am aging at the same rate as everybody else. <laughs> I'm not the other day he goes, so you're just doing this for the money. And I was like, I mean, yeah, at like a fundamental level. Yes. Otherwise I would have kept creating content. But the one thing content was not doing was setting aside for retirement. Like I was paying my bills, but it wasn't doing anything more than that. Um, so I had to go back somewhere that would like build a 401k for me and all that language. And if you guys, haven't been looking into that be sure to be looking into that because retirement will come up on you 
and it's better to be kind of prepared and have that like in your mind and in your sights as opposed to letting it just happen to you you know i think as of right now uh retirement is a cruise ship and at 59 65 75 whatever age you get to walk up to the gangplank and see if you have put enough in that you get a ticket and right now my wife and i get to walk up to the gate and we get to look lovingly into each other's eyes and one of us gets to die uh and the other one is allowed to get on um the objective with me going back into the workforce is that they're they're you know we might be in the lowest deck down with the engine humming next to our room but it would be nice if we could both get on the ship mm -hmm. um even if we have to get on late uh so that's that's the shift so i'm just trying to buy you know a third class ticket <laughs> to sit down by the engine <laughs> uh statistically the man dies first which is fair she's been putting in more and she's been more consistent in her contributions so statistically the ticket goes to the person that earned it but it'd be I, i'd like to ride it with her if that's if that's allowed that's not dark <laughs> i said lovingly into each other's eyes <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and one of you he also didn't say who so one of y'all just i will tell you her response was better be you uh because my <laughs> wife does have dark humor <laughs> when i said it to her she goes it better be you <laughs> i was like that, that's fair uh, so i don't know where you are in terms of that but i know here in the united states they recently passed a law so if your company's as a certain size they are supposed to automatically contribute three percent that's not a match anymore it's an automatic con contribution and uh and so just kind of looking to see if there's any kind of options i personally recommend getting out of debt first before investing but at the end of the day i, I, I don't want y'all working at walmart you know 65 plus because you need to <laughs> we'd rather hang out play video games be the retired or what was it uh like um it's retired and there was a there was a terminology for like mmo players the uh homeschool and retired yeah that yeah we called those we called those whores in wild classic <laughs> homeschool or retired the, the 40 mans back in classic um but yeah good things coming I'm excited. I, I enjoy my job. It's rewarding. I'm good at it. They treat me really well. Um, I, I do miss being a full-time content creator, but this is this is allowing me to, you know, I will probably put more in my retirement in my first year doing this than I did in two and a half years of full-time YouTube. I mean, I definitely will, actually. So. Thankfully, I mean, that was a very low number. So it's not like, wow, your first year was amazing. Um, I, I, <laughs> two and a half years of YouTube just really didn't produce a lot of spare income. So I, I, I am immensely filled with gratitude for just how much I was able to do thanks to the support of the community. But um, 65 and 75 year old Chris is, is needing me to make some slightly different decisions. <laughs> And I was given an incredible opportunity to get back in. And I'm having a blast. Um, yeah. They're treating me well. They just don't know the level of nerd that I'd prefer to be. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, I think on that note, Brian. Um, ready to wrap it up? With you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm cooked. My voice hurts also so bad. <laughs> I don't know if y'all can hear it, but it's it's failing. Yeah, it's 1.30 here, um, Tech Central. So the, uh, yeah, I think the most prudent thing is to probably just say good night, everybody. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. Whatever platform that you were watching on, we appreciate you. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And we will see you in the next thing that we create. If not, if nothing else, we'll be back on Friday for the podcast to talk about more on on trail chris you got any final thoughts before i had no, the stream we're live every friday we got lots of thoughts um you guys make sure you're taking care of yourselves and we will see you guys friday see you on friday